We're at 7 o'clock. I'll call the order. Uh, order Selectman meeting for October 7th. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. We'll start uh, tonight with our public service announcements. You want to read those for us? Okay. Um, once again, we want to remind you about uh, getting your flu vaccine. The Board of Health will hold the following flu clinics at the Chelsea Senior Center on Wednesday, October 16th from 3.30 to 7 p.m. From 3.30 to 4.30, it'll be for those ages 65 and over where the high-dose formula will be available. And from 4.30 to 7, it'll be for those ages 3 and older. Um, everyone must bring their health insurance cards. At the Chelsea Town Hall, um, here on 50 Burica Road, on Tuesday, November 12th, there'll be a clinic from 4 to 7 p.m. The high-dose formula will be available, and this clinic is for uh, anyone ages 3 and older. Again, be sure to bring your health insurance cards. And the Board of Health is also going to hold the school-based flu clinics at the high school, McCarthy, and Parker schools on Tuesday, October 22nd. Um, information and consent forms will be advertised through the school bulletins. Thank you, Pat. And brings us to open session. Is there anybody that would like to address the board tonight in open session? Hello, my name is uh, Jerry Hall. I'm at 34 Lovett Lane. I know tonight you'll be talking about uh, recommending the uh, articles that have to do with Route 40 to the town meeting, and I urge you to do that. The Route 40 committee's uh, findings, I think, offer a good long-term uh, needs for the town of Chelmsford. I think they're on the right side of history. I think they're also compatible with the people's concerns for noise and traffic. Now, you're going to hear other voices tonight that urge you to do not recommend that somehow the committee was defective. I find that kind of surprising when you have two members from the Board of Selectmen, uh, three members from the Planning Board, residents, uh, one of whom who also served on the Planning Board at one time. So we're going to hear that there was really no data from the stakeholders. We've heard this argument. So let's take a look at the data. I sometimes feel like we're dinosaurs recommending dying industries for update for commercial development. The original uh, plan that we re people societally rejected at the public hearing back in uh, last summer had gas stations. You know, just today they announced that uh, the big three, Volkswagen, GM, and Ford, are spending billions of dollars to fully electrify their plan, their cars by 2027. Uh, GM today announced the layoff of 600 engineers who are internal combustion specialists. They're hiring 300 chemists for batteries and 300 programmers and coders instead. I think uh, a gas station is kind of on the wrong side of history here. I think a bank is also on the wrong side of history that has a drive through. I think anybody under the age of 30 with a smartphone is making fun of any dinosaur like me that goes to the bank to deposit a paper check. Pharmacies, uh, again, a pharmacy with a drive through um, Express Scripts, Pill Pack, the internet. I know my son who is a uh, Marine who was injured on the job gets a monthly supply and a big roll of uh, bubble pack, and the pills are in order in which you're supposed to take them, and the time is printed on it, and you just pop, pop, pop. You never go to a drugstore. Jerry, I'm just going to let you know, we're going to limit you to three minutes, just okay. as a heads up. Um, you know, we're talking about chain restaurants, and if you look for the data in Food and Beverage in Bloomberg, and Advertising Age, and Economists are talking about Weathervane, Outback, Olive Garden, all of those are closing stores nationwide. I don't see a big demand for what the uh, venues that are open on 129 attracting uh, new, new customers for that. A supermarket with parking for 150 cars with Peapod and Amazon and Whole Foods, I think that's another declining business model. So what's left? What do you put up there? You know, a, a kennel with barking dogs 24-7? I don't think that's compatible with people's concerns about noise. You know, the quarry, the asphalt, Route 3, that's noise enough. High density housing, I think you better check with the finance committee and the school committee before committing to that idea. We also laughed last year at a hotel adjacent to a beautiful asphalt plant. Don't think so. 
Now, the uh, pro developers will tell us residents that maybe a McDonald's will be good for us because the food smell will uh, overcome the stink from the asphalt plant. You know, folks, these ideas were rejected back in the summer of uh, 2017 when over 200 people came out who were against these things. We keep hearing we're going to miss a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Oh, God, I wish it would be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You had the opportunity last summer. You had the opportunity with the, with the uh, Route 40 study committee. There's an opportunity with the town meeting. You know, enough is enough. No is no. We don't want big commercial development up there. Now we're going to hear tonight about a state grant to look at the interchanges on Route 3. The only one that isn't built out is Route 40. Is this another veiled attempt at a fourth bite at the apple to get development up there? I think it's a waste of taxpayer money. I wish you would return the grant. I think the people have spoken. Now, I think we should remember the old Roman saying that withstood the test of time. That's vox populi, vox dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. So select people. Get on the right side of history. Get on the right side of the residents. Get on the right side of the voters. And recommend what Route 40 did for the Route 40, area, uh, Route 40 Committee did for the area. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Howdy. Eric Meekle speaking on behalf of the Board of Health. Uh, we had two objections with regard to Article 23, Section 195-150. Sections B, B, A, and B, B. Uh, specifically, these are the ones that refer to putting high density uh, senior living uh, close to the asphalt plant. And our concern was that putting an at risk population to live next to and not get away from, uh, in general, we would have some concerns about that. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Freitas, Precinct 4. I'll be quick. I know you have a long night. Um, I just want to give a shout out to everybody that was involved with Turnpike and Mill. Um, I'm sure the residents really appreciate it. And I really want to give a great shout out to the DPW. They did a great job. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kim Bennett. I'm from 25 Lovett Lane. I will spare you the details of my opinions because I've shared them over and over since the Route 40 proposal came about in August of 2018. In summary, I will simply say I agree with Jerry Hall. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Donald Van Dyne. I'm here as a member of the Planning Board, but not representing the Planning Board tonight. I'm here to ask you not to recommend Article 23. This article creates by right zoning overlay district to promote and encourage affordable senior housing next door to an asphalt plant on Route 40. The idea of creating this kind of zoning at Chelmsford is noble and needed. But the siting of the overlay abutting an asphalt plant is egregious and disrespectful to all seniors in our community that wish to age in place. Zoning is meant to reflect the values of a community. Its purpose is to promote the health, the safety, morals, general welfare of a community. Article 23, to create senior housing abutting an asphalt plant conflicts with all zoning best practices. It's implausible that any member of this board honestly feels that steering seniors to live next to an asphalt plant reflects who we are as a community. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., I will be asking my fellow planning board members to withdraw Article 23. Tonight, this board has the power to take the leadership role to protect our seniors and send a message to the planning board and all Chelmsford residents. You care about the welfare of our seniors. If there are any town meeting representatives or members of our community that wish to age in place watching tonight, I wish you, I ask you to call or email a planning board member or come to our meeting this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Tell the planning board this zoning overlay to create affordable senior housing next to an asphalt plant is offensive 
and does not represent who we are in Chelmsford. Again, I request this board tonight not to recommend Article 23. In closing, if you personally vote for some ungodly reason to recommend Article 23, please look straight into the camera and for the record, tell members of our community and America why you want cherished seniors to live next door to an asphalt plant. Thank you. Hi, Pam Armstrong. I'm currently the chairman of the Route 40 Study Committee. I live at Scotty Hollow. What Donald said disappoints me greatly, and I know the Board of Selectmen is very much Excuse on board. Mr. Chairman, if, if I can make a motion, there's no reason why she should be pointing me out. They've done this numerous times through all other committees. There's no reason to dog me. Okay, Thank I'll, you, I'll withdraw that. Um, the members of the Selectmen that have been here for a while know that Route 40 and the asphalt plant have been fighting the air quality and the health risks of that asphalt plant in Route 40 for three, four years now. Thousands of residents in Westford and Chelmsford came out, they put up their own personal money, they got an attorney, and they fought in the courts of this state to try to stop that asphalt plant. And they did it on the grounds that the infants, the children that play outside, the adults, and the seniors that live in that area. Scotty Hollow has many of them that have health issues. And the courts decided that there was no health risk to anybody, that all those people that live in that community and live in that area, all those thousands of people, if you went into any of the schools in Westford during those um, selectman meetings and listened to them talk to the asphalt plant people, to listen to those attorneys, to see the people standing outside the schools that couldn't get in, they didn't take this lightly. We didn't sit around and say, oh, it's not a problem for us to live there. We fought this. And the courts decided, the EPA decided, there's no health risk next to the asphalt plant. None of us are at risk, not, not the youngest of us or the oldest of us. So I don't think that having a, a care, continuing care, and um, I can't even say it anymore. <laughs> I, you know, any kind of housing that might go there, any kind of hotels or restaurants that go there, we've been assured by the courts and we've been assured by the EPA there's no health risk. It's not going to hurt any of the residents that are going to continue to live there. It's not going to hurt anyone in Westford that's n there, near there or the elementary school down the street, not the golf course at Nebnasset, and not the residents at Scotty Hollow on the other side of the ramps. So um, I urge you to vote in favor of Article 23. We've looked at all those studies. We've considered all those aspects. We've taken a great deal of time and effort to come up with a plan that works for our community, that works for the area, that works for the residents, and we think that we've done a, a very thorough job. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to address the board tonight? Last call. Seeing none. Thank you, everybody. All right, so we'll move on to committee vacancies. Okay, as of today, we have the following uh, vacancies. There's one vacancy on the Arts and Technology Education Fund, one vacancy on the CCA Advisory Committee, one vacancy on the Center Village Master Plan Implementation Committee, one vacancy on the Commission on Disabilities, two vacancies on the Community Action Program Committee, four vacancies on the Council on Aging. Um, these are all associate member positions. Uh, the Cultural Council has several vacancies. They can have up to 21 members. There's two vacancies on the Energy Conservation Committee, one vacancy on the Historical Commission, three vacancies on the Holiday Decorating Committee, two vacancies on the Middlesex Canal Commission. There's a, a, an opportunity for an alternate member position on the Neshoba Valley Technical High School Committee. The Parade Committee welcomes all applicants. There's one vacancy on the Permanent Building Committee, one vacancy on the Personnel Board, five vacancies on the Public Celebrations Committee, three vacancies on the Sign Advisory Committee, two vacancies on the Skate Park Committee, and one vacancy on the Tree Committee. If you're interested in applying for a position on any of these committees, you can fill out an application online on the town's website or in the town manager's office. Thank you, Pat. All right, so uh, let's see, item five tonight, we have a uh, class two auto dealer change of location for Edward Gu 
Gukoskov, doing business at Broadway. Um, from 103 Tingsboro Road to 123 Princeton Street, currently Phil Smith Car Sales. Yes, good evening, Selectman. Um, I, would, I applied for application to move my current dealer license from 103 Tinsborough Road to 123 Princeton Street. Just wanted to expand my business to a slightly larger scale. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Do have any questions for him? The, the, there wasn't a lease agreement in the package because it's being drawn up contingent on this decision? Is that, was that my understanding from reading Yeah, it? I'm moving based. If I'll get the license, then I'll move to the new location. Do we need that in the package or no? No, I don't think so. It's not required? Okay. You have an agreement with Mr. St. Elia, do you? Yeah. Thank you. I have the agreement. It's, I think, what, a 35 car, is it 35 or 45? 45. 45. 45, yeah. And what do you have now, about 12? Up nine. there where you were, nine? Yeah. yeah. It's a good location, so. Oh, I don't want to I mean, I, I will say that, uh, we have a discussion on it. I, mean, I, I did notice that the lot there was getting pretty light of cars, so yeah. I think I'm, I'd be happier to have someone that's going to use the lot and yeah. operate out of there. A motion? Um, I make a motion to uh, approve the um, Class Two Auto Dealer License to Edward Gustafsson. Gu Gu Gukasov. Gukasov, <laughs> yeah. doing business as, as Broadway, um, currently located at 103 Tingsboro Road to move to 123 Princeton Street. Is it 123 or 133? 123. 123. 123 Princeton Street. A second. A motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great night. Next up, we have a Class Two auto dealer, uh, BS Motors, Inc., at 103 Tingsboro Road, currently Broadway. This is a new license, then. It's a new license. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Selectmen, Attorney Brian Occasion from the Law Offices of Kevin J. Murphy. I have an office at One Courthouse Lane in Chelmsford, Massachusetts. I'm here today with um, BS Motors, Inc. They're applying for a uh, license to sell secondhand motor vehicles at 103 Tingsboro Road in Chelmsford. The principals of the organization are Sonia Quinn and Bruno Sales. Bruno has experience in the city of Lowell as a principal uh, at Revolution Motors on Middlesex Street. Uh, he successfully run a business there. Uh, he and his partner are breaking up, and he is looking to, uh, along with Sonia, to open a business at 103 Tingsboro Road. The license currently is uh, nine cars. I've explained to him that historically the town of Chemsford is much stricter than the city of Lowell and the number of cars that are allowed on the lot. So he will have, um, he'll make sure there's only nine cars there and Sonia will make sure there are only nine cars there. They've entered into a lease with Phil and Lynn Smith for the property uh, and they're asking uh, that you approve this license. So uh, I notice you don't have a master's driver's license? Uh, no, actually, I have it, but it's ex but it's expired because I have my work permit. But since Trump changed uh, a couple of regulations, it's take taking much longer to renew it because they always give it for a year. But I already submit the application with my immigration attorney, so I should be uh, getting my license between December. It could be up to March. How about your partner? Does your partner have? Yeah, uh, she, she has it. Yes. Any other questions? No. Motion? Okay, I make a motion that we approve the Class 2 auto dealer's license for BS Motors to be exercised on the premises at 103 Tinksboro Road. 
I'll second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, with that, that brings us to a one-day all-alcohol beverage license uh, for St. Martin and Armenian Church at 180 Western Road. Is there anybody here for them? They don't come anymore. It's, three. Not coming. it's actually it's three one-days. Oh, yeah, three one-days. 11-2, uh, 11-22, and 11-23, 2019. Good catch, Pat. So I make a motion that we approve three one-day um, all-alcohol licenses for St. Martin's Church for uh, November 2nd, November 22nd, and November 23rd as presented. I'll second. A motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That brings us to the fall town meeting warrants. Do you want to run through them or do I? No, we can just go through them in <coughs> numerical order, I guess, yep. if, you know, if that's the case. Um, obviously, Article 1 is town re uh, report, so there's no motion or recommendation on Article 1. Um, Article 2 is to rescind the uh, remaining unused borrowing, un authorized by an issue borrowing for the forum. Um, finance can be recommended unanimously. Again, th these articles at the beginning are more housekeeping articles. Make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 2. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Article 3 is a rescinding the unexpended appropriation for the Progress Avenue sewer pump station. There was a balance of $93,200.64 from that project. Finance can be recommended 7 to 0. I'll make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 3. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 4 is the uh, rescinding unexpended appropriations from the Community Preservation Fund. Uh, there were four completed projects, um, you know, all, all less than $15,000. Obviously, Community Preservation recommended that because that's how the article moves forward. Finance Committee also recommended 7 0. Make a motion. We recommend approval of Article 4. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 5 is the cemetery improvements for the ongoing work uh, at the cemetery project at Pine Ridge. Um, $50,000 is for this next phase, and the finance committee recommended 7 to 0. Make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 5. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Article 6 is the Commonwealth in Transportation Infrastructure Fund. That's the 10 cent per rider for those who. Um, Ride the uh, car share. Um, the amount this year is seventy-eight hundred and two dollars and fifty cents. Again, we have to appropriate that uh, in accordance with the provision. The finance committee recommended seven zero. I make a motion. We recommend approval of Article Six. Second. Motion Aye. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Article Seven is the collective bargaining agreement. The, the only one that we we have at this point um, is the. Police uh, Patrol Officers Union, uh, the 215000 which this board approved at a previous meeting. Uh, Finance Committee recommended uh, 7 to 0. Um, and then later this evening, you'll, you may have a second one, but let's <coughs> keep it where we are right now. So 7 0. Make a motion to recommend approval of Article 7. Second. Paul, should I abstain from this one? Yes. Yep, I'll abstain. So motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 4 1. 4 0 1. Article 8 is recommended no action. Um, there's no changes to the current fiscal year operating budget. Um, we'll probably see something more towards the spring. Uh, Article 9 is the sewer construction stabilization fund. This again, this is the transfer of cash from the interest earnings that funds the uh, debt service on the project. Uh, finance can be recommend 7 0. Make a motion that we recommend, recommend approval of Article 9. A second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 10 is for the South Row School Elementary, uh, South Row Elementary School roof. This is a $400,000 appropriation from free cash for the partial roof replacement. Um, this would be done on the Massachusetts School Building Authority Accelerated Repair Program, in which, upon the completion of the project, the community would get reimbursed for approximately 50%. Finance Committee recommends 7 0. 
I make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 10. A second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 11 is the fire department uh, breathing air compressor unit, $95,000 from free cash to replace the current unit uh, that uh, has passed its useful life. Finance committee recommended 7 0. Make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 11. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 12 is a request for trans transfer of $80,000 from free cash for the purpose and purchase and installation of rectangular rapid flashing beacons at crosswalks adjacent to the public schools and the high street intersection of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Finance Committee recommended 7 0. Make a motion we recommend approval of Article 12. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 13 is a request for a transfer from free cash in the amount of $250,000 for the purchase and installation of bituminous concrete top coat on the exterior surface area of the public works facility at 9 Alpha Road. Finance Committee recommended 7 0. I make a motion. We recommend approval of Article 13. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 14 is the transfer from free cash. Um, for the um, of the amount of five hundred fifty thousand two hundred forty two dollars for the resurfacing and installation of granite curbing for the remaining portion of the Chumpsett High School parking lot, finance can be recommended seven zero. We make a motion. We recommend approval of Article fourteen. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Article fifteen would be no action. Article sixteen would be no action. You then move on to Article 17, which is the beginning of Community Preservation Fund. This would be a transfer of $214,200 from the Community Preservation Fund General Reserve for the relocation, reconstruction, and enhancement of ball fields located at Roberts Field. Finance Committee recommended 7 0. Did the uh, community um, preservation recommended? That's what yes. it can't. Was it an unanimous? article cannot get to the town meeting or, or, or acted upon by town meeting unless the Community Preservation Committee recommends action. Okay, was it unanimous, do you know? I believe so. I believe so, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, it was. Yes, yeah, there, there I go. Oh, wow, I got Linda here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She's hiding back there. Well, let's finish up everything up to Roberts Trail. Uh, it's sort of phase two. There's still some additional work. There'll also be the exterior walking track, which was part of the state uh, appropriation right. and the budget. But there are some, still some work, I think, over by the um, ice rink and uh, the, the, the pond. The big numbers are done. Yeah, big, big numbers are done, though, yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion. We recommend approval of Article 17. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 18 is the community preservation uh, transfer of $60,000 from the Community Preservation Fund General Reserve for the planning and design of a pedestrian bridge across Beaver Brook in the town center. Finance Committee recommended 7-0. I'll make a motion. We recommend approval of Article 18. Second. Uh, we have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Article 19 is a transfer of $100,000 from the Community Preservation Fund General Reserve for the creation of a facade improvement program for buildings located in the town center and or Vinyl Square. Finance Committee vote was 4 to 3 in favor. And again, on the Community Preservation, was the vote was unanimous? Yep. Okay, I'll make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 19. Second. So before we vote on this, just a quick sort of question to whoever, Paul, maybe. Um, if this comes back that it's not legal, because uh, I think there was some question at the Finance Commission Committee meeting whether there was precedence for mm -hmm. this. So if yeah. the state does rule this not allowed, then it's invalid. But we, but but this has been reviewed by town council uh, and and. And, and by CPC, and, and it was, was noted that the Finance Committee meeting, you know, they, they brought in, you know, officials from the Community Preservation Committee and so forth to discuss this, and, and, they, and we believe it is a legal appropriation okay. by the and, town. And the CPC yeah. does have a process that goes through, so, so it does vet all the projects, and, and there is a very specific the, process the that goes through. Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's a process, okay. so. Do we have a motion to second all in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Yes. <laughs> ahead of us there, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Curveball.
Article 20 is is a sewer capital project. That's the transfer of $565,500 from the Sewer Enterprise Fund free cash for the following sewer capital projects. Lord Road Sewer Pump Station Building and Generator Replacement, $220,000. Vincent Road Sewer Pump Station Building and Generator Replacement, $200,000. Weed Street Sewer Pump Station Control Panel and Generator Replacement, $120,500. And Milan Avenue Sewer Pump Station Engineering and Design for an upgrade at $25,000. Finance Committee recommended 7 to 0. Make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 20. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 21 is a ch charter amendment uh, <laughs> to change the name of the Board of Selectmen to Select Board. Uh, Finance Committee recommended four to three on this. <laughs> Ironically, it was, I think, two of the women that disagreed with it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Why? I'll make I'm going to have to go watch that meeting. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We recommend it. I think uh, go ahead. Th the concern was, are we, ex are we spending all kinds of energy to make this clerical change? And I think the ultimate response was, no, it's kind of like going into a Word document. Find and replace. Find and replace. Exactly. Yeah, no, I was paid two so. years to do that. It's a very quick process. Like, <laughs> it's it's a it, five minutes, yeah. So let's not spend all night. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Make a motion. We recommend approval of Article 21. Second. A motion a second all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Four, four to one? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Opposed. Four to one, yeah, okay. Article 22 is we begin the first of the zoning articles. Article 42 is a zoning bylaw. Uh, 22 uh, zoning bylaw amendment regarding Route 40 Groton Road. Finance committee recommended six to one. Um, um, the planning board has not voted on this. They did. They did. What was the planning board? It was six one. Make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 22. Second. New motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 23 is zoning article submitted by the Planning Board for the adoption of the Community Care Community, Continuing Care Community Overlay District. The Finance Committee voted 601 with one, you know, obviously one abstention in favor of Article 23. This seems to be a, a, an article. There's a lot of discussion, and uh, I was interested this evening to hear about the Board of Health concerns and, um, and other concerns, and also the fact that uh, one member of the Planning Board is intending to ask the Planning Board to withdraw this article. Um, I wonder if um, everybody would be amenable to waiting to vote on this until we find out how those um, aspects of this Play out. Well, yeah. the point the point of having these uh, is two separate things. Was so that the continuing care community overlay district could be applied to other areas in town as applicable. So this is its own thing. You were just voting to approve a flexible overlay district that can be applied according to planning board decisions. So it's it's a, it's an entirely separate thing. Yeah, but what what, what uh, Don is saying is that he's he's asking them to remove twenty three. Or to pull it back, we may not it may not even be on the town warrant. So what Pat's saying is, can we wait for them to see this Wednesday the planning board? If they pull it off, we don't even have to vote on it. But uh, so what I'm confused is it, because this is meant to be, as I understood it, uh, just the creation of another overlay that we can use and pull out of a toolkit to say, well, what would what would work? And so this would be a this is a, a set of parameters to create a continuing care community but but it, but it does specify which um, lots it applies to yes so the article 22 and 23 go together yes okay so the first step is to pull the IA to the street and the second is to allow an option for the CCOD overlay it provides another option you could still choose to just use the underlying IA zoning under which you can do all kinds of things. 
Um, I would just like to point out that the committee did talk about housing near an asphalt plant. Um, there was discussion about the air quality and the fact that we were told there were no air quality concerns as one of the speakers during open session said. There was discussion about modern construction techniques, window techniques for things like noise. And there was also a look done, a cursory look done at the 110 asphalt plant where there are 500 condos within a half a mile of that plant. And those condos are selling at full market rate. They're on the market for 30 plus days. Um, the other thing I'd just like to say is in, so we all know what happened at the public hearings in August of last year. When the committee went to pre-brief the planning board to give an in-process look, I think it was the February-March time frame, and some folks started talking at the podium at that point during that meeting, um, Mr. Van Dyne suggested moving it forward to Springtown meeting, calling that meeting a public hearing, and let's go forward. Then we had July where the EDC went to the planning board with a letter trying to discredit the community, the committee, um, because there were residents on it. And if you go back and review the intent of the committee and what the planning board wanted on that committee in terms of the demographics, it was exactly what they said they wanted to do during those public hearings. And then in September, the EDC came forward with a different argument to the Finance Committee about having the grant and needing to wait for the grant. And now we have yet another argument about housing near an asphalt plant. So I'm just, I'm concerned about all the inconsistencies. So um, I, guess I think the committee did what they were intending to do and like I said, this is giving an option. There's not gonna be a lot of movement up there in the near term. <laughs> so if some other alternative comes along out of some of these other thought processes, then so be it. But there was nine months of thought, a lot of stakeholder input over those nine months that went into this. And so I, I just, I don't think it's as, um, I think it's a lot more well thought out than it's being characterized by some. So I'll just leave it at that. So right. what, I'm, what I'm wondering, Virginia, is if the planning board on Wednesday night decides to pull the warrant article, we don't need to vote on it tonight. So are you are you asking that we vote on it tonight, regardless of what happens for Wednesday night? Uh, so the if, planning if board already voted six to one, and this is on their agenda in new business. It's not like a. I'm just, I'm just so, trying to figure out what you want I, to say. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I I'm think fine that that's with voting sort of on irrelevant. it tonight. Like, but I mean, if, so if they pull it, they pull it. They, I mean, as it I don't stands, think it's going to change my mind, I I guess. just need to know what you want to do tonight. That's all. If it's going to, if, if that's going to influence your thought process, then it's not going to influence my thought process. But I, if it's going to influence people's thought processes, we should consider that. If it's not, then we have, we vote, we have the vote in place. I think the committee's done a great job, by the way. So, uh, yeah. but and and they have had a six to one vote. Uh, but he, there is going to be a motion to with for the board to with to withdraw the article. So, are we still having our meeting? We we having our annual meeting like you know a meeting like point, we have at this point. There's no meeting scheduled for the night of town meeting. If the board wishes to call one, but at this point, this I have no reason article. to call. I have no no agenda at this point. Because I mean, that's the only, we don't have another meeting before that, no. right? So. No, no. Two weeks I from mean, tonight is town meeting, and next Monday night's Columbus Day. The the other thing is is that there was ample time at every single Route 40 meeting for public input. And I, I I don't deny any so. of that. I just need to know: Do you want to vote tonight or not? Because we may not need to. We could vote on it tonight, and then Wednesday night, if they do pull it, it's useless if. How much time have we spent discussing whether or not to vote on it when we could just 
vote on it as is, and if it could pull to get it's a Because hold. Pat made a suggestion that we delay the vote. I just, I mean, like, I just, I just wonder what the. And I respect that. I just. But the it's not going to affect me. Purpose of rehashing this is. I don't so. think it's going to affect me either, but I, I don't think there's a problem waiting to the. Uh, waiting for that evening, if unless we don't want to have a meeting that night. So, so you we make a motion right or did you I did not make a motion. Okay. Hmm? So under your suggestion, we would meet right before town meeting to vote right. on this article? Yeah. Can, can I make a motion to just vote on it now? Recommend and vote, in, vote in favor. I, I recommend a vote in favor. Second. Need a second. <clears throat> I'll second. Okay. So we have, uh, a vote, we have a motion and a second in favor of the article. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, what was that, George? I said I'm not going to vote against it. I, you know, I don't know how. I mean, that puts us in a difficult position. I mean, I, uh, so I'm not got, against you would, the you would prefer to wait? I would, personally. That's, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, that, you know, I'm fine with that. Then everybody's happy. I mean, then yeah. the planning board's got to, you know, if, if they've, you know, I don't think it's going to change, but that's my, my opinion. But the one thing I will say is I'm not an expert in planning board issues. Uh, you, you know, you know something? That? You, that's a surprise to me. <laughs> <laughs> my wife has changed, tra trained me to say I'm wrong. <laughs> I know when I'm not You're right. You're too so modest. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, I, I mean, I, I would like to hear what they have to say. I mean, I, sure. I, I, if you force me to vote, I can vote tonight. But um, That's fine. Yeah. So we're going to wait. in a second? It's right there. Are we voting? No, no. Or are we waiting? waiting? The, waiting? So that's three fine. of us would prefer to wait. So All right, we'll that's wait. fine. That's fine. Fair enough. All right, so I'll post a meeting for the uh, the, tw the 21st of October at 6.30. 7 o'clock. It's going to take. Right, 7 o'clock. This is the right, only thing on the agenda. We postpone any more. All right, all right, okay. All right, but, all right. All right, 7 so 20 meeting, meetings, right? The uh, Tom Meany starts at 7 30. 7 30, yeah. We won't need more than five minutes. 10 minutes. All right, moving right along. Okay, Article 24 is the uh, zoning bylaw amendment to amend the community enhancement and overlay district to allow multifamilies in the industrial areas. Uh, the Finance Committee voted 7-0 to zero opposed to this article. I'll make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 24. Discussion? Well, we can have a discussion after the... Yes. Um, a yeah, second? After a second. Yeah, motion now second. second discussion. I, I, I share some of the concerns that have been raised about whether this is something that we just want to do as a blanket for all IA. And I think that there's been some very, this was a very specific and conscious decision made in areas like Center Village and the Bayod. And my, my gut is that we still want those to be conscious decisions to allow multifamily and industrial zones. Um, and I appreciate the Finance Committee's concern that this may actually dilute our focus on filling the commercial spaces because we're responding to a market that wants to build multifamily housing. What was the financial? Seven to nothing opposed the article, or recommend oh. against the article. Oppose it. So um, I have, I have, uh, I've, I've heard, but my understanding is that if you are building in a uh, formerly industrial area, you have to do soil tests. Like you can't just plop a house down. This isn't, we, we have zoning regulations. We have, um, I, there are some states where there are no zoning regulations and nobody tests for anything. My, my comment wasn't about soil testing. But I, I, so that's one of the, the issues that, that has been brought up. Mm -hmm. uh, with regards to the planning board's concern, I, you know, everything I've heard from cities that have had and towns that have that have been able to revitalize, you need people before commercial. Like you have to have people living in a walkable 
community with good transportation access and accessible sidewalks and a functioning streets, complete streets and, and sensibly laid out parking and sensible development. And then commercial comes in after the housing. And, and that is the way that uh, large towns and small cities have turned around uh, from the workshops I've attended. So I uh, will go back and review that finance committee meeting to, to see what the arguments were. But I, the, the, my understanding is that you do housing and then commerce follows. And so long as it's a walkable area where you have complete streets with sidewalks and even <gasps> bike lanes and, you know, traffic lights, <laughs> crosswalks, <laughs> complete streets. So we are looking for a, a livable community where people can actually live their whole lives and stay here and survive. This is this is where this is where the commerce comes in. And otherwise you're just building a mall. Paul the planning board vote on this? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah the planning board submitted the article. Oh, so they're obviously in favor. In favor. Yes. It wasn't unanimous. It was not unanimous. What was yeah. the vote for planning board? Two the I don't recall. I recall. Uh, Evans escaped. Evan just Evans escaped, yeah. Should have screamed. Don't go with <laughs> All right. You want to put that one up to the same night? Or do you want to? Why? Yeah. We're yeah, not going to have any gonna. more information. Unless you want to do more homework. No, I. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I say we put it off is the family has to do more homework, but I'm, I'm ready to vote. I don't. No, I will vote on this, and I can do homework on the side if I, you know. Don't find a job between now and then. Do you, yeah, too, do you, want, to, <laughs> do, do you want someone from the planning board to add uh, in? We, we have planning board members here if someone would like to speak to it, if we would like a perspective, but. I mean, I, I'm good, so. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. All right. We have a motion in a second. second. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Article 25 is a zoning bylaw amendment pertaining to pre existing non conforming residential lots. Finance Committee voted six to one in favor of Article 25. Make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 25. I am torn on I'll this one. I'll, I'll second for discussion. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so a motion to second discussion. I'll help you along a little bit. I mean, the idea behind this was that, for instance, where I live, if I wanted to put on a porch because of, mm -hmm. I have a less than a quarter acre lot, I have to go to ZBA. Right. So there's a lot of those applications that end up in front of ZBA that just choose up a ton of time. So this would allow me to have more leeway and it would free up, I don't know, like 80% of the applications going to ZBA. Right, I think because, it is. because so many, isn't it like 83% so, of the, yeah, so all of the, Westlands, the lots all of are, are smaller and therefore, so, so yeah, so, right. Well, I just don't know if there's like some you the set, your setbacks, you mean the same setbacks, right? Yeah, setbacks and so forth. And, and, and right, you can't make it more non-conforming without right. going to ZBA. Right. It's only if there's the same amount of non-conforming. Right. But I'm, what always worries me about this, again, not understanding zone law, if there's some back door that's getting stuck in here that's going to allow someone to, you know, go to five feet of the property line all the way around and build some behemoth, you know. But <clears throat> No, it just applies the standards that were in place at the time of the construction. Yeah, we're rolling them back to the date when they were constructed. All right. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 That one. Article 26 is the zoning bylaw amendment that provides minor updates to the cluster open space uh, development bylaw. The Finance Committee recommended 7 to 0 in favor of this article. I make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 26. Second. Yeah, motion. Second. I, I have discussion? a discussion point. Yep. Please. So I, I absolutely support this concept and this idea. What I am really having trouble with is um, the removal of this being by special permit. And now now it's all by right. 
and I think there were reasons why it was put in place with special permit even at the 10 acres and I'm just concerned about taking away those checks and balances that the planning board had and so I, I don't I don't like the language that makes it by right I think it should still be by special permit and if this were to get amended to put the special permit back in I would fully support it but I don't support the language to make it by right I think you hit the nail on the head for me so we have a motion a second any more discussion that's the sort of thing that we have to wait to town meeting to propose an amendment. Somebody yes. could yeah, somebody, somebody could propose cannot, an amendment yeah. on the town floor. All right. So something to keep in mind. So your motion is to, to approve. We recommend approval. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? And I just I just wanna remind folks that we are recommending that this go forward to town meeting. No. 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 What's your recommendation, it's your recommendation for the article. Mm. We recommended that a long time ago. Yeah. Well, no, you have no choice. The, no, 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 elected board, it is now. the elected <laughs> planning board spits an article on the warrant, it goes to town meeting. You have a recommendation whether you support or recommend against the article, which is advisory. I mean, I agree with Virginia on an amendment that would make it. So as it's written, do we recommend this article? That's the question we're asking. So I'm going to go with no. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, sorry. Aye. So that's two all against? Aye. Aye. Three, sorry, two so what? Opposed. So we recommend against it. Okay. It's amended. That's a different story. Okay. Article 27 is the zoning bylaw amendment regarding historic preservation and reuse. The summary is provided in there the finance committee after extensive d deliberations voted six to one on this article sure yes six to one it was a six to one vote yes, by the finance committee yeah in favor? Yes. After extensive discussion. <laughs> you waiting for a motion? Yep. Sorry, did you make a motion? I did not. Okay, that's fine. Do we have a motion? I will make a motion to uh, accept the article as is. We have a second. Is the second just to open it for discussion? Sure. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'd like to see this move to that meeting so we could do some. You know, that's my only. I, I'd like to do a little bit more. Uh, I've had a couple of calls on it, and uh, what are the concerns, George? Uh, the concerns from the people were uh, what is it, uh, they may be just uh, building too much of a, a additional house. Uh, a, a, I guess it's it could be more than a two family. It can be like a three family or a four family or whatever. Is that uh, is that the uh, intent? Is that the intent? Three families. Three families. Three yeah. families. Okay. So I don't know if the same people were calling you that were calling me, but yeah, you'd end up on some of these houses on like High Street that the historic houses could be made into three families. And I don't know if that would take away some of the historic. Uh, you know this, the look or whatever of the uh, of the property. So I mean, I I, I, I think, I think it depends on how it's done. Like thinking about places I've lived where there have been converted units. I uh, I mean, you still have to. I, 
So the, the, the pre-existing non-conforming article is like grandfathering yeah. lots in that are below today's current lot sizes. The biggest concern that I have heard with this one is the language that basically allows the proactive subdivision of lots, very small lots. Um, and, and do we as a town want to keep doing that? So the lot is not less than 15,000 square feet, which is... That's still a large lot. <coughs> like, that's, that's large. In a town with one acre zoning. I, I mean, I, I... One acre zoning doesn't make for, for walkable, complete streets with uh, planned open houses. I mean, you know, I mean, if you want, if you want... Preserve, so if you want to preserve open space and, and you want a, a livable, walkable community that works for all ages and you want it to be age friendly, uh, smaller lots with sidewalks. I mean, I, there are plenty of family friendly neighborhoods uh, in, in towns uh, with even higher property values that have smaller lots. I mean, I. So I, I think that, that where this says the lot contains not less than 15,000 square feet, like that's still, that's almost double the 8,000 square feet that my lot is. That, that is. that is a substantial amount of land. And I think between mine and my two neighbors, that's uh, two, four, five, five units on, on you know, 15,000 square feet because I've got two, two families next to me. Like it's, it's not, that's not, that's, that's a neighborhood. That's that's a yeah, neighborhood. The, the next step after that, you have three units with six people living in it with six cars. Then they complain that there's not enough parking, so they pave. Next thing you know, you have one of these beautiful old houses that's all asphalt all the way around it, and maybe an outside fire escape that's metal, and you you have the slow decline. Is that a decline? It depends well, on I how don't it's know. done. I guess how you look at it. I mean, like it depends on how it's done. I I think that 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 is. Uh, We have one request to defer this, so. So let's deal with that first. Should we defer it or not? I don't have any objection to that. I don't have any okay uh, respect for George. I'll defer it. That's the way I want to. That's what I'd like to do. I, you know, I like to be fair because yeah. some of these things came up today. That. Uh, okay. All right. So, do we need a motion to defer it, or just no? Okay. So moving on. Twenty-eight. Article 28 is a zoning bylaw amendment to eliminate the sign advisory. The uh, obviously it's supported by the planning board, supported by the board of appeals, and the finance committee recommended 7-0 in favor. I make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 28. One sec. I'll I, was, second. I was reading parking requirements for all of us. We have a motion a second, so discussion. And the reason why they're removing it is because this is now yeah, covered under. Right. It's and, and we don't, we, it seems we like we can't staff We can't get a quorum on the committee and, right. and most yeah. of the it's, assigned things. No, 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 I get it. Board. I get it. I was, I was right. highlighting so stuff from Article 27. So we may have so. motion, motion a second? Yeah. No, I mean, second. Ready to vote? Or we I have a motion in a second. second. So. so all in favor? Aye. 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 Article 29 is zoning bylaw amendment reveal lots, no action. That completes the zoning articles. You've got three articles remaining. Article 30 is a, a, a bylaw to um, exempt real estate taxes for parents or slash guardians of a deceased active service members. Um, this is the, uh, the provision that came out under the uh, Valor Act uh, last year. Um, it's a state acceptance, local acceptance. The Finance Committee voted in favor 601. Make a motion that we recommend approval of Article 30. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Article 31 is, um, a, a, again, adoption of a local option under, under Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, 140, Section 139, Paragraph C. This would waive the fee for a license for a dog that is owned by a person age 70 or older. 
the Finance Committee voted four to three in favor of this article. Despite the fact that this is a Massachusetts general law? No, it's a local option. Oh, okay. You're not, you're not required I get it. to yep. do it. All right. I wish we could limit it to one one dog per person over 70, but after that, <laughs> I'll recommend uh, approval of Article 31. I'll second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 32 is the final article in the warrant. This is the general bylaw amendment regarding the prohibition of single-use plastic checkout bags. Uh, recycling Committee obviously is bringing this back again, uh, essentially unchanged from a year ago other than the revision of the dates. The Finance Committee recommended in favor, six to one. I'll make a motion to recommend approval of Article 32. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's it. That's too bad. So do you, do you, do you, do you want a minute or do you want to meet at six thirty or seven on the? Uh, what time should I post that? Meet at six forty-five. What time on the? Uh, well, let's we have two articles. Let's wait and see if we have anything else we need to vote on. Okay, because right, okay. it's still possible we might. Okay, all right, all right. So that brings us to report and presentations. With that, we're going to kick it off with a presentation by the business development director. Good evening, my name is Lisa Maroney, uh, Director of Business Development, and I'm here to kind of follow up on information I provided in your packets about a new exciting grant opportunity uh, that we are referring to as the Business Amenity Incentive Grant. So following on from last year's small business grant that we received from the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development, this year we received similar funds but twice the amount um, of last year. So very exciting opportunity for us to uh, create some changes for the Chelmsford Crossroads at Route 129. We've decided to use the allotment of funds. It's a $100,000 grant um, given to us um, in its entirety for business development and in discussion we've decided to use this as a focus on the crossroads as a way to entice a business amenity. We are um, you know, still not seeing anything coming forward to provide um, conveniences for the businesses that are down there. We've been in conversation with the property owners, um, tenants, they are still looking for a restaurant, um, a publicly accessed restaurant and or um, beverage um, service. So we, we discussed this and we've been looking at the Marlboro um, program as a guide to see how that's been working for them, similar with Hudson as well. So we've created this program, Business Amenity Incentive Grant, and um, areas that are eligible are the um, <coughs> the overlay district, the business amenity overlay district. So in your packet is a uh, call for proposals, cover letter that you'll see. Um, there's also a advertising flyer um, on the next page. And then a real um, light covered application process because we're again looking at how other communities have been successful in this pursuit. We've decided to not create a lot of restrictions so that we can see what comes forward um, for us to decide uh, at the town's discretion um, what we would like to try to um, execute to full completion. So the application really pretty much asks for a signed lease agreement with the property owner. And the intention of the grant is to pay for equipment and or um, fit up costs because those are the most cost inhibitive things that um, are difficult when you're trying to set up a restaurant or a food or beverage uh, amenity. So we're looking forward to kind of um, getting this program publicly announced out into the arena of the uh, brokers and realtors that have been trying to um, get projects going on 129. They're continually showing their properties and actively um, you know, engaging with potential tenants, but still we're, we're not getting to um, any, any uh, finalized projects. So we're hoping that this might help 
bring attention and excitement and um, some services and conveniences for the businesses that are down there, and that may also create more business attraction. So, Lisa, how would you disperse this? Would it be, uh, would you be matching for a, a space within, or? So oh, okay. we we've, we've discussed that quite a bit, and you know it really comes full circle to the point that we didn't want to put out a lot of criteria and restrictions or guidelines so that we could decide that as okay. it comes forward. Sure. We may get one application, we might get five. We don't want to turn anyone away. So depending on the the credibility and strength of the of the applicant, we may possibly allot the money to one project or maybe decide on maybe two projects would, would be able to happen if we if we break the grant up a little bit, or maybe we can make some other connections with lenders or other, other possible um, funding sources that could help the grant go a little bit longer and further. But we, we've decided to just leave it very vague and open so that we can receive as much opportunity as we can get. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Lisa, congratulations mm. first. Um, Thank you. Did we learn anything from the previous grant program that we executed where, like, w will we be able to maybe spend a smaller percentage on the administration so we can put more into the community? I know some people were concerned about that with the last go around. And right, right. Yeah, we certainly learned a lot. We learned an awful lot. So um, some of it we knew. There is a lot of time consuming, lots of hand holding with the smaller businesses. And what we found was that the requests for small increments were um, quite time consuming for the for the vetting process. So, you know, awarding 2,000, mm -hmm. 3,000, um, it, it, it took an awful lot of time um, to, to actually, but it, it makes a big difference for the small businesses. Uh, they did come looking, you know, the applicants that weren't chosen and some new applicants did come back looking for the program to happen again, but we really thought that it was time to try to create some type of incentive on 129. To answer your question of could we do it without administrative support, some of what happened with using so just to clarify, I wasn't yeah. suggesting without support. I'm just wondering if oh, we sure. can yep. find some efficiencies having been through yep. it. Yep, I yep. So part of and and part of that is that they used the vetting process as the same application as a small business loan. So you know we're not, I'm not skilled in how to vet that out. You know, I can get lease agreements, we can look at longevity, we can look at impact, job creation, the diversity of business, their location, all of those types of things. And, you know, maybe we could have hobbled through it. We wouldn't have been able to do it as efficiently as the guide of what um, Frankie provided us from community network, uh, teamwork. But um, we could we could do it on our own next time. But I think we've decided that we really need to get a, um, it's time to create a boost for interest in 129, especially since we put so much effort into the website, the drone video, the marketing campaign. I've got, um, you know, people coming forward and brokers and, and they're, you know, they're looking for what, what else we can do. And aside from starting to talk about consideration of, other incentives, you know, I think this is the greatest opportunity that most of the businesses that have recently left are are saying it's just much too inconvenient. Some of those empty spaces don't have cafeterias. They just have small kitchenettes, so to have that service, um, to be able to fit up a restaurant for the public to use, as well as the whole community in the business park would really be a big win for the crossroads. So are we giving up any of the hundred thousand? In the last grant, it was fifty thousand, but ten went to admin. Right. We're keeping the whole hundred, right? Yes. Yes. So yes. There's no admin on this one. Correct. Right. right. So we'll be doing that at you know with the town manager's office, myself, Evan, Economic Development Commission. They'll you know we'll we'll be more involved in in the vetting, but we also have no idea what's coming. If we'll get one or two or none or five, so. By putting this program out now, we're we're able to manage um, how we handle the response in the way that we want to. Yeah. So, so I'm a little. You want to go, George? 
I was just going to ask: Have you had many, you know, the, the bigger, you know, larger uh, restaurants, the b big name restaurants, and things come into town, and and uh, maybe they were uh, they didn't they didn't go through with the plan because they can't purchase the land. I mean, is it mostly because they have to lease? Uh, is it uh, most of it is they don't like the vacancy rate that's out there right now, mm -hmm. and so if we could just make some more, some baby steps towards you know if you put out a grant for a hundred thousand it's not a lot of money but it's it's a good amount of money to it get is. a project started and it could be step one towards getting um you know getting some momentum going especially since the businesses are asking for conveniences and we're not looking to put out a 200 seat restaurant but it really could help with fit up um with with some of what that, uh, you know, the expense of getting a restaurant in, especially since the property owners are interested to, you know, modernize their buildings, and this could be one of those ways. The property owner is willing to uh, match any of that? We don't know yet. You know, if there's an interest, then there starts a discussion for a lease agreement. Maybe that will, maybe that will happen. But if they want, if they want to generate some more interest but remember that the type of project we want is not just to be able to serve three tenants yes in a, in a three four floor building we want not that you know we want something that's like a a public yes a public amenity where it could support after hours and business hours and that you know the daytime workforce on the crossroads is about seven thousand five hundred people come into that park <coughs> and, and most of the empty buildings are lacking amenities. Yeah, it's a it's a catch twenty two. Yeah. So so one thing is, Lisa, you know, and uh, you know, I've been pretty involved mm -hmm. in talking with the business owners down there and doing the site tours and mm -hmm. sitting through all these committee meetings and listening to everything, <coughs> all the input. You know, we if you if you do take a time and drive the back roads, if you drive up <coughs> off of Elizabeth and Alpha and Omni and all of those, you'll notice that a lot of those buildings back there are full. Mm -hmm. yes. um, they've, they've chopped up a lot of the bigger spaces and filled them up with a lot of smaller units. What we're left with are these gigantic units that are on the main strips. When you drive 129, you're like, oh, this place is empty. But you're not really seeing the whole story unless you actually take time to slowly drive during the daylight through and seeing a lot of foot traffic and a lot of full parking lots in the back. Yeah, there's um, definitely a lot to celebrate. There's a lot yeah, of potential. There's, um, you know, we've got some very important businesses here that are providing great jobs and um, the diversity of businesses is is very good as well. We're not all stacked up on, on okay. manufacturing or communications. It's, it's a lot of important stuff happening out there in the crossroads. It's just unfortunately, of the vacancies, it's all in five buildings, and three of them are all in a row in the in the first you know visible stretch. And we really threw, you know, a bone at it by saying we'll even allow drive-throughs down here. We thought we had a pretty live yeah. fish in the line that really has been quiet now. It's quiet, but if you notice, they're doing a lot of demo they are. on the yeah. exterior and interior. I've been, so I've been checking; they've been pulling permits. Yeah, there's there's something happening. Right. It's just not time to share it forward publicly yet, right. but they're. There's something you know worth working on. It was just what they're doing. So we're trying to do all our part, and they're very pleased, very much so, with what the town's been doing um, in, in supporting economic you know stimulation out there. Um, and I think this grant hopefully could be the tipping point. I'm I'm pretty excited to get it going. So well, where I'm going with it, and what I'm wondering is, in talking with restaurant owners in particular, um, whether they're breweries or pubs or their big concern is coming to these buildings and not having the right drain mm -hmm. system, drainage systems, and water coming in and so <coughs> forth, and being able to make sure they got the right grease traps. And that's, it's all, you know, you have these solid concrete floors, you got to jackhammer them up, you got to do all this work. It's very it's expensive. It's a huge hassle. Huge it's hassle. A huge hassle. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, where you, where you sort of hit that roadblock. And so what I'm wondering is, and not really a question for you, but I mean, is there any discussion about the town matching any of this or give a matching tip? Because this is for the business, right? So this is again, for the we're leaving. opening the restaurant. But that's that's where I was wondering. This too. grant is towards who is footing the bill for the, the fit, fit up. up. So if it's a negotiation in the lease and there's give and take, you know, um, if if the landlord is picking up a piece, the tenant is is picking up a piece. We're looking at the bigger picture of what the impact is and and you know where the where the deal breaker point is 
and that's why we leave it flexible where we can be involved to decide yeah. because there but may it, be three projects. A lot of these discussions, even that we've, you know, just off the cuff with some of these business owners are, I don't want to put more money into my building. So what I'm wondering is, is that discussion even come up of maybe we match it with some sort of a TIF or we match it with some but of the TIF only applies to improvements the of the challenge it should yeah. just be the upside of it upside of Although you know, still get the taxes on the base right it's just the improvements right. too but but, but knowing what it takes to put brewery drains in like it's it's sometimes worth even just creating another step in the concrete just to lay the pipe in new concrete because but if it's, it's a million dollars but it, but, it, but it would have to be a, a, the incremental assessed value of the building and I'm not so sure that type of work is going to significantly move the needle in terms of the assessed value of the building. So on, yes, on we would we would look. I mean, yeah, yes, we're open. That, to it. that actually works in our favor even better then. But it does. <laughs> You're still collecting the same base taxes, right? But, you but when they hear TIF, they go, "Oh, wow." Well, you know, the TIF. eligibility of the improvement is not just <coughs> drains; it's how you move the the added new value, the new right. capital right. improvement to the building. Maybe. So that really depends on the market. The other available buildings, it doesn't necessarily instantly start ticking it up because they put in great drains. No, I agree with that. But anybody but, that goes in and renovates it and puts yep. in a, you know, a go-to location. I mean, if it was a yep. Capital Grill, you walk into that, and from what it is now to Capital Grill, yep. that's a substantial upgrade. It's a great discussion. You know, this is why we're kind of encouraging open applications so that we can see on our side what we can influence to get projects done here. And that's why I wonder too, you know, if we have larger landlords, like, do you want your building filled? Like, how can well, some you help? Some of them don't, some of them aren't. Some of them, some we, of them do, we do have large landlords in some of those cases and they're looking yeah. at it and saying, well, as long as we get the second floor corner office rented and we're getting our 7% rate of return on the money when we originally bought it 20 years ago, we're not gonna do anything to the building. So you, you end up with this. I think a lot of people stale. are also d thinking about how the uh, Boston suburbs are being so oppressed with the cost of doing business in that area for, for transportation and life science and cost of living and all of that. And they're all waiting for it to kind of force its way out this way. Um, but, you know, our buildings have just been empty a little bit yeah. too long. Yeah. On a side note, I also noticed in the paper today there was an article about the bus system that goes from Lowell down to Burlington mm -hmm. to bring laborers down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a stop? Could, could a stop be arranged in Chelmsford for we that? Night, we can do it as the LRTA, so yeah. we can We've discussed we can bring it. That up. Yeah. Okay. We've discussed it. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Else? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Lisa. And Mike, traffic. <coughs> what I've provided you, Mr. Chairman, is just a brief update on what we've been doing with the Traffic and Safety Committee. As you know, at the last meeting, uh, the board had inquired about the cost of sidewalks in the Ledge Road and Dunstable Road area. And Assistant uh, DPW Director Stephen Yanley, who's here this evening, did provide a cost estimate which is attached to the memo. Um, it's currently up on the screen. Um, he estimated approximately $200,000 to do the sidewalks on Ledge Road up towards uh, number 50 Ledge Road. And then if the board was also inclined to do some of the sidewalks on Dunstable Road heading down towards Dunshire, that would be an additional approximately $340,000. I'm sure if you had specific questions, he'd be happy to answer them. I don't have specific questions, but to me, if you are willing to put 200 into a park for kids to play, I don't understand why we couldn't do 200 towards the sidewalk to keep kids safe when the buses are coming. But just my quick thoughts. Well, because the and not to be a devil's advocate, but a park serves the entire community where children's across the community can play in a park. You're providing a $20,000 sidewalk for one road in town, and the list of roads in towns we're requesting sidewalks, we, you know which is, is considerable. Now, obviously, this situation is unique, um, but we, we, we're looking at the situations out there, and as you can tell, at every turn, we seem to get bad news, including the news that came before the meeting this evening regarding the state parcel of land not being a viable option uh, as an alternative. Um, so the question is, is do you want us to be planning to, you know, for next construction season to install a sidewalk on Ledge Road? And if the answer is, is yes, well, then which side of Ledge Road do you want it on because this is either, only one side only one side <coughs> because uh, either side's going to require some takings of you know which means we'll be going to town meeting 
uh, probably an April town meeting to uh, obtain the approval for the easements and takings. So we're just trying to get a sense of direction. Again, we don't need an answer this evening, but we wanted to come back with additional information that you're talking $200,000 for a sidewalk on one side of the road. And, and, and if you go you beyond that, then, then, as you said, if you start going into Dunstable Road, and if you're heading towards Tingsboro, we, we really can't spend Chelmsford money on putting a sidewalk in Tingsboro. Oh, fair there, there's a dip in Dunstable Road that crosses through Tingsboro. So they're, they're, it's really they're, small. But we can't expend our money on money. that, no, so we would not. have to reach out and we'll see what we can do. And then you still have the concerns on Swain Road and so forth. So, again, but, we're, but we're just, just trying to give you a holistic view yeah. of uh, – we're not saying do it, not do it. We're just trying to tell you that, you know, if, if the board's, you know, direction is get a sidewalk in out there, we'll get it in out there, and we'll come back to Springtown meeting with the easements and takings authorization – and then try to get it done next when construction you, season. When you say easement and taking, I mean the, road, the front, the, the front the, of every road. The road right of way is not sufficient to install a sidewalk and have sufficient two lane traffic up and down uh, Ledge Road. But the the front the front of uh, a property is is usually uh, like a built in easement for oh, things have, like Steve electrical. Right? We have plans. That, we have. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll let Steve already. speak to it. We have plans for Ledge Road to lay out. Because because my understanding was always like if your property runs to the street, it's not really like there there's always the possibility yes, no. for All right, Steve, public great, works. Hi, good evening. Uh, Steve Yonley, Assistant Public Works Director. I'm uh, just to that, I have a, a little bit of experience up Ledge Road area from back in the nineties when I was working privately. And just because the layout's forty feet and the road is twenty four feet, it's not in the center of the layout. It's all over the, that road is all over pavement wise. So where I might have on this side I could have 10, 12 feet from the edge of pavement to where the town owns to, to the edge of the right of way. On this side, I might have a foot or two feet. So part of my estimate that I put together was, you know, a survey for that because we would need a survey to then prepare easement plans because to be consistent and come up one side of the road and maintain a 24-foot or 22-foot wide road, whatever whatever we deem, and then have a five-and-a-half-foot uh, wide sidewalk, I'm going to have easement takings up that whole length of that road, I would almost guarantee, whichever side is determined to uh, put the sidewalk on. And then to speak to the Dunstable Road thing, uh, if you're familiar with Dunstable Road, I think it was back in uh, 2007 maybe or 2006 or maybe even earlier than that, uh, we installed sidewalk from Vinyl Square up to the Dunshire Road intersection, Swain Road on uh, Dunstable. So I kind of priced coming back from Ledge down to connect into that sidewalk. The problem is, as Paul alluded to, uh, about 1,300 lineal feet of that is in Tingsboro because the town line right after Mission Road kind of does so we can't, you know, we'll have a gap, you know, in the sidewalk unless we ask Tingsboro to, <laughs> you know, uh, we come up with some kind of agreement. So, you know, it's just a, it's a wrench in the works up there a little bit. With what if having you use that the other side of the road, Steve? What's that? What if you use the other side of the it's road? It's all in Tingsboro. Even the other side of Dunstable yep. Road, both sides of Dunstable yep. Road? How right after feet? Mission Road, it kind of, the town line kind of cuts over and cuts back. 1,500 feet in Tingsboro? It's, it's about 1,300. And, wh and what is the cost that we're paying per foot? Uh, I'm just wondering what it would cost Tingsboro to pave that. Well, I don't know. I, the the pricing I put together was uh, based on our unit pricing, our annual bid pricing for curb and, and sidewalk. I don't know what, how Tingsboro would how many How many feet is, the, is, is ledge? ledge? Oh, Ledge, uh, 1,950. It's almost a thousand. So, so it'd be about 150 grand at that yep. roughly. Yeah. Yep. And again, on ledge, I'm going right up to just across from house number 50, which is right about the fork at that little Oak Hill Road, because that's the end of the town layout. We don't own any further. Okay. Does, does anybody want to give any, Paul, any guidance on that, or do you want to sit on it? Again, we'll be coming in next month at next meeting with an update on traffic in, in okay. general. Um, but is that your only item? No, we've got no, a couple no, other no, items. No, one right. of the other things that I want to discuss and, and make the board aware of is what the, the board's, the excuse me, the Traffic Safety Committee is thinking about for improvements along North Road and in the center. And just to remind folks, 
The committee consists of the manager, myself, um, DPW director, his assistant, uh, Chiefs Ryan and Spinney, and uh, Lieutenant Spence also comes along. So when looking at how to improve the flow of traffic in the morning and also to avoid any possible uh, collisions, there was discussion about the traffic light as you were headed westbound, coming off of 129, headed towards the Unitarian Church. You can take a left onto Route 110 and head westbound. Right now there's a green area. The thought was by making that a yellow arrow, it would force people to stop and think before proceeding directly through that intersection where we have people right now. Right. See it's, the it's, green a green, it's a green arrow that goes to solid green, green. But you're supposed to a yield. Full cycle. Yeah. Right. The sign says yield on green. Yeah. But I'm noted. having a hard time. Where are we turning left? If you're going, if you'll even I mean, here, the center. Go, go across the center and you want to go to left towards um, Bertucci's. Brickhouse, Bertucci's. Yeah. It's Littleton Road. That traffic signal is your, is once you, you're, you're past with the Christmas tree and you're going to go left on the Littleton Road. The light goes green and then after a uh, green arrow as well. And then after a while, the green arrow goes out yeah. and the sign says yield on green. What happens is cars see the green light and they keep going left towards Littleton Road, you have cars coming the other direction from North Road that, that are crossing them and traffic, and then the horns start going and it's a danger. So the thought is to adopt the new state convention of the flashing yellow for the left-hand turn that mm -hmm. you often see now utilized. We have to ask the state areas. for that? No, we, it's now the new standard in Massachusetts. Okay. It, 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 that obviously came after the installation of lights there. So the thought would be the light would go green, and then it would, you know, green arrow, and then after the green arrow would go the flashing yellow Some arrow, yellow. which is what you often see on left-hand yeah. turns. Yeah. And that for the people then who have to go left on the Littleton would have to stop and could not go in front of the cars that are coming the other way on North Road. Makes sense. So it makes it, makes it safer. That's, that's one, one aspect of improvement there. And so the other aspect of the improvements would be on North Road heading south to the center. So if you were coming from... Drum Hill coming into the center, there seems to be a bottleneck right as you get to the flagpole. The traffic that is exiting Westford Street trying to come in and merge into North Road right at the flagpole. Oftentimes in the morning, the cars are trying to merge in and they block the flow of traffic trying to get through the light off North Road. More importantly is if you have cars, and there's quite frequently cars that do this, they're trying to get across two lanes on North Road to take the left-hand turn to proceed either Chelmsford across Street. on 129 or turn left onto Chelmsford Street. So in discussing this, the committee's thought was we will try blocking off Westford Street right as you get to the common, and that would force the traffic to go down Academy Street to the light that is there, and then they could integrate, they could take the left, or they could get in the appropriate turn lane to come through North Road into the center, and that should improve the flow of traffic rather than stop the cars that are flowing forward, and it would make it much better. So that's something that we're looking to implement by cordoning off that section of Westford Street to see how it works. So, so Mike, I'm sorry, yes. did you want yeah, to say Yeah, no, because what happens is if you see, and I've do it regularly. I if you're it. in the morning, the light turns green. Then you get the people looking at the ones on Westwood Street. Do I let them in? Not let them in. The the hesitation. Then what happens is the lights are changing because nobody's moved. In addition to those who are trying to cover across a couple lanes, the thought would be to put the gate at night near the flagpole in a gate, not a permanent barrier. So and then have signage up at the other end saying not a throughway. So that way the church still has access for its parking and its services. So you're not going to block the road way up by the monument. You're going to you're going to install a gate, almost similar to what you see as a highway yard gate at that end. And the reason not to make it permanent is so if there are events in the common, such as the uh, Fourth oh, of July uh, country fair or the uh, the holiday parade where you're running horses and so forth, you can open up the roadway to traffic as opposed to you know a permanent closure and Jersey barriers and so forth. So that's the, that's the notion. With, with, Could it with be that something plan. prettier than just a swinging silver pole? Yeah, but something. Yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, but but you get the idea. Not, not a permanent. Not a permanent. You know, right. Black swirls. Black. Right. Okay. But but you know what I'm saying. Not okay. a permanent closure of okay. the, a physical oh, closure know. of the road because again, the, you would you lose something in terms right. of the country fair or the holiday parade. You, still would, you still would be able to get in there, like the park, to go to the common. Exactly. You go to the church and the exactly. Exactly. But you center. wouldn't have an outlet. You'd have right. to go back. Yep. Turn around. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that's another consideration. And we know that's a big deal, so we're not expecting a vote this evening, but we wanted to air that out you know, to the board and the community to get feedback and thoughts uh, and, and eventually a vote from the board as, you know, since you're the traffic 
you know, mm -hmm. ultimately traffic commissioners of the community. One thing I would just consider, uh, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I drive that pattern a mm -hmm. lot. And when you're coming, I come down from Westford mm -hmm. Street. So when you're coming down that way, there's probably 50% of the cars that peel off to the right by the Unitarian Church to cross those two lanes of traffic for people who are letting drivers in, and the other 50% go down Academy. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to now steer all the traffic down Academy, I don't know if you should, if if we you would need to look at like the timing of the mm, traffic sure light and yep, things because the traffic's just going to be gridlock all the way up Westford Street, mm -hmm. and even now, like if I choose to go to Academy, sometimes I'm sitting at the light because the people on North Road are blocking. It's like the timing of everything is just off. You can't even get out at the traffic light at Academy. Right, so, and, that, and that's part of the reason of improving it up at right. the further up so because of the hesitancy. I, I would just you know. it, and, and as we phase this in because have we have effect. all these partners, we would encourage that people obviously obey the lights but we would utilize the police to get out there and do enforcement and ensure that people aren't blocking the intersection okay because it would, would be a transition assume, period I would assume that there are models like you could is there like a computer modeling system where you could run light cycles to make sure like how do, how do light cycles get determined I've seen it done in studies of some of the outside consultants I don't know if we have software in-house or not you also no. have sensors. Um, the other, I mean, you, you know, your expensive communities have people monitoring the traffic and adjusting the signals. Mm. We're not talking that, mm -hmm. but yes, there are there are models to do that with count, traffic counts as well. We don't as sensors, have those type of models. No, we, no, no. I just, I no, don't know. I feel like this in, is like that's one how of those they, automated right. things. Like there should be a computer program that would let. That's how you they do like, it. In, that's how Boston's now done in some of the you know suburbs by the Boston. They were all interrelated, interconnected for yeah. traffic flow. Uh, two other sort of points there, and I'll take the the simpler one first. I noticed that they, in front of Blake, that island, mm -hmm. they put in the two handicap ramps for the sidewalk in each end of the island, and then this week they filled in between with loam and seeded it. So now you've got these two ramps to go up to a sidewalk that's now loam. Any idea what the state's going to do there? I didn't see that one. No, we, we I just know, went by this morning and they were we, spraying it. I'm like, well, we do know the state's, you know, basically going to be completed the, uh, by next spring, most of it construction this fall. Next spring, we, we will come in and, and close off that portion of Worthen Street and okay. make it a T intersection. Yeah. We were talking before that? On the island itself, in front yeah. of that beautiful old pine tree, yeah. they put a cement handicap ramps on each side of the island, yeah. and then they put loam in between the two ramps hmm. and seeded it. So just wondering what they're doing there. I don't know. There should probably be cement connecting it. Yeah. They, um, and then the other one is, back to the traffic, as you're coming by Fishbones at the end of the day, mm -hmm. taking a left on Route 4 North, mm. people all day long will pull three deep into that intersection, and then the lights turn, and the people coming the other way can't even move until those three cars wait a light cycle to get through. Right. Can we put up some kind of signage to say, don't block intersection, or... You want more signage in the center? No. We can. I mean, that's the problem. Can you, yeah. can you put a, I don't know, put a put, a, put, a, put an officer or, out there yeah. who's ticketing people that would stop that real quick. Because you're not supposed to enter well, the intersect. That's, you're not like, supposed to that's enter like the a intersect. classic Worcester thing. Like it's on Facebook there. Yeah. almost once right. a week. Yeah. And Somebody's I sitting can, there like this, you know, filming. Yeah. Good luck. I'll talk to the chief about it. Thank you. Which is a nice segue. The, the other thing that I put on this memo was an updated... Uh, traffic enforcement memo from Chief Spinney. He wanted uh, the year to date. Um, he brought this to the last meeting, just showing the number of motor vehicle stops, citations, and accidents through this last year, uh, recapping the North Chelmsford traffic action plan. The number of deployments was a total of 50. Um, he had only made three commercial vehicle stops for uncovered loads. There was um, 360 stops with 120 tickets issued, and that was primarily for the ledge, Dunstable, Swain, Groton Road, Main Street areas. Um, he did specifically point out what had happened when we had the state police truck team that came up um, with the six troopers, that they had stopped 17 vehicles and they had discovered 18 violations. And the last thing on that I want to note about the committee, um, as you will recall, back in June 12th, we had the listening session, and we took in 67 different speakers yep. or comments that evening. <coughs> I've grouped those to approximately eight different categories, four or individual categories such as 
traffic enforcement, pedestrian issues, um, enforcement, and the other four are site-specific areas, such as North Chelmsford, um, Turnpike and Mill, Littleton Road. And what I was going to ask the board is, if you want to pick another night, I can come in and we can kind of go through most of those issues in those areas one by one, what we've accomplished, and I can bring it in in either a spreadsheets or some graphic representation of you know what the percentage of issues are where they're where they're coming rather than this evening I, I didn't come in I have a general overview of what we're doing if you have some questions right. about those individual areas but I'd be much happier to present to you almost on a one by one basis where the status of those issues are I have had some questions from the public like are we gonna have a follow-up session and then I've had people say to me oh you guys have done a great job you don't need a follow-up session so I think what we should do is have you give us that overview to the, the board uh, okay. in completion. And then we can decide that night if there's a reason for to have another public session where we have the public come in or not. My suggestion, Mr. Chairman, would be a meeting sometime after the conclusion of town meeting. That way we get past that and then I could come in um, and have a formal presentation with right. graphics. Could we, could we set it up so that Mike's briefing the board but that we have a public input segment on the agenda in case there's something I mean that might save you from having a separate public meeting or would you rather just take a first pass through it's up to I just board. thought I think might be a good idea that we get updated before with the meeting yeah let's, okay. let's let's judge it well with the public session at I mean even if it's the same night but you're right I mean we could do it and then yeah and, you know, when we did have that session with the 67 speakers of that, um, if my had to guess, um, and again, this is just a guess, maybe there were 28 topics. I know some were short-term easy fix, some were midterm, some were long-term, and, and you had broken them out that way. And we can look at what's, if we're making progress, maybe we don't need to have a public meeting. But, yeah, we'll do it that night, and we'll have a, a public input afterwards, and we'll go from there. Yes? Okay, so that'll be in your next meeting, November 4th, just so you know. Next regularly scheduled meeting. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> Paul, you're up. Yeah, it, it, just a few items under my report this evening. First one is that one of the board to be formally aware, you've obviously been notified already, but to notify the community that a proposal for the redevelopment of the Odd Fellows Building uh, parcel, I guess the best way to describe it here in the in, the historic center is scheduled for um, Tuesday, October 15th at 7 p.m. at the police station training room. It'll be a joint, the meeting will be hosted by joint boards, meaning the planning board, the conservation commission, the center village master plan implementation committee, and the historic district commission. Um, obviously, members of the board of select will be there. We expect EDC and the public, uh, and that is is um, <clears throat> regarding the redevelopment of that parcels. Um, the property includes the rehabilitation uh, and um, of the Oddfellows Hall, subject to the determination of structural sufficiency. Uh, they are proposing a first floor restaurant and upper floor residential rental units uh, at that site. In addition, the um, plan is to rehabilitate the Fisk House, uh, and uh, also the plans include the construction of new residentials to the rear of the property. The portion that's probably more commonly identified as the municipal parking area uh, by the brook. Uh, obviously, the Santanda Bank branch would remain. Also, they've they've uh, extended a lease there, so it's a major redevelopment uh, consideration in the center. Again, that the um, meeting will be Tuesday, October fifteenth at seven p.m. It will be covered by Chumps to Tell Media um, at, at at the police station at seven p.m. Um, so that's significant. Also related to the center, the proposal for Nine Acton Road, uh, which is the, the conversion of that commercial building to a residential, that hearing has been postponed and I believe it will be scheduled at the end of October at the planning board meeting. Um, that will be following that. Um, so that would be on the 29th. Um, so again, major considerations in Charleswood Center coming up. Um, next Paul, time, yes. Was um, Am I remembering correctly that there are some funds set aside by the state legislature for uh, Chelmsford Center redevelopment, and if work starts on the Odd Fellows, that would be released. Am I remembering no, that correctly? No, there, there, there's funding that's been 
authorized but not appropriated for the Brookwalk, okay. uh, the, the five million dollar you know grant uh, authorization. I glad think, the last governor. Right. No, it's a current government, current administration. It's still active. The the hope may be that yeah, given if, if these projects move forward, that they may be an opportunity to to address the governor and say, look. This is an, an, an investment of significant millions of dollars in private investment in housing and a <coughs> urban air, you know urbanized area, i.e. the smart growth, the yep. pedestrian walking, all you know, all the things of, of you know transit lines and so forth. And if there's ever any opportunity that the that funds may be released, a portion or all of it, that would be the opportunity. Right. So yes, that's that's but on we, people's mind. We do have money to bury the next section of the lines underground. Right, we have portion. Well, the the work still hasn't been conformed on Cushing Place. Uh, to then go beyond that, to go through the center to, um, you know, to um, you know, ultimately, you know, towards the library area, that would take a, a, us reaching an agreement with National Grid and Verizon uh, to initiate the next phase of the underground utility project. But developers could put towards that if asked correctly like yeah you know, but the the numbers are significant no i know yeah yeah you're going through a lot of water there i mean yeah but it, and, and the main part the bridge is, right the, the 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 issue with verizon is is they those are major trunk lines that have to go underneath the um the brook uh you know down to, you know towards towards bedford um that's a major project uh, but again we, we're we're in the black in terms of the account, so there's really no technical reason why they shouldn't advance it. The national grid issue is there's plenty of money in the national grid account. It's just getting their authorization to utilize some of those monies for the joint work that would be done out there. So again, once we get some clarity in terms of what's going on, you know, it, it's... But it would be great while doing the Oddfellows yeah, building yeah, to have it, this it, done. Now's the opportunity to do it. It's, yeah. As I said, it's once in a lifetime, quite frankly, that, you know, <laughs> what's out there. So if it's ever going to happen, it would happen now. Your lifetime. So, so again, that's that's totally. coming up. Uh, you know, uh, two major parcels in the center coming yep. up um, in the next month or later this month, um, as you're on the heels of the of the occupancy uh, of the uh, grist mill, which basically all the units but two have been sold at this point. Okay. So next item I have for you uh, is the the the. A, Grind a pump appeals policy, a formal grind a pump appeals policy. Um, it's it's there in your packet. It's there. What, 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 in speaking to um, insurance council on this matter, uh, perhaps a way of resolving the the outstanding issues regarding the grind a pump situation would be to have this formalized prop, uh, appeals policy ad adopted. Uh, this has been uh, reviewed by insurance council, uh, and so I'd ask for your consideration in a approval of that this evening this is a policy yes so just like any other policy do we have to put it on notice for a week and then this is not a selectman policy not a selectman policy. policy i'm just policy. i'm just looking for your so well, you know i'm for it okay all <laughs> <laughs> right all right i just i, I, I just i just, I just want it'd be helpful if the board were on record saying yes but you know we think that this is a positive I, I just uh, have one step question. forward yeah when, when I, so so you council did review it yes um th was there anything that came up about if I look through the flow here, mm -hmm. um, if they don't like what the superintendent said, they can go to the director of the Department of Public Works, mm -hmm. and the superintendent works for that director, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and then if they don't like what the director of the Department of Public Works said, they can go to you. And the yes. So it's it's all up this chain of command. Yes. And was there Were there any comments about whether there should be some independent body or independent person involved like even in the hearing or well, the, is the independent <laughs> body is out is beyond the town if you're dissatisfied with the rendering from the town manager's office you have the right to appeal that to the you know to, to either the assessors in terms of the appellate tax board ultimately yeah. um or you could obviously take court action you know i mean uh, any uh, by you know from the town to the to the district or, or you know superior court I mean that would that would be the the option as well. There's always an avenue outside of the town. No, I understand that. I just didn't know if in the hierarchy of going through it, if we typically, if it typically goes through like the whole the same chain of command, or if there's some. I, I'm just think, I'm looking at the optics of it, Paul. I mean, if they if they don't like what the superintendent or the DPW yep. director says, and now it's in your hands, at, even like at the point where there's a hearing, should there be a member of, 
Uh, if the answer is no, that's fine. But I'm just wondering if there should be another well, think body any, person or body there that like the planning, take, the, the planning the, board is planning check and balance out of the chain no. of command. Are you looking well, for like an elected rep to be I, there? I don't know. I'm just raising the question of whether that's well. I think in any uh, other things like I mean, I guess you maybe could compare it, say, to a, a police. Um, you know, when they right. complain, yeah. and that goes up through the chain through the of command the same okay. way, right? And okay. finally to you. Or a labor, right? or a labor yeah. complaint, right. a labor grievance, an employee okay. grievance. It goes to the department head, to the, you know, to the manager, oh. then outside the town. I mean, it, it's the town administration. is. And the reason why we got in trouble is we didn't have a written appeals process. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So, so that's I, I have a question. I, I think there might be a, a typo on there. Okay, the, could be. The, the third paragraph from the bottom, the last sentence. So the town manager shall review the proceedings and de decision below. Is that below, the word below belong in the end? Oh, no, it should be deleted, sorry. Okay. In decision, and within 30 days issue a decision in writing. May I make a motion that we approve the grounder, grinder pump appeal process as presented? Second. So we have a motion and a second. Just one note before we vote is You'll note that this, when we said it was reviewed by council, it was reviewed by insurance, insurance council, council, not town legal council. I mean, it technically is town legal, but it, it's from the insurance company that cited this. Mm -hmm. Is that the person who represented the case? Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and what the hope is that if this is adopted, that we'll then present this as a means to resolve the case. Yeah. Approved as All right, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 As amended. Thank you. As amended. Okay. Um, the next one, I want to formally notify the board. Uh, it, it's happened since your last meeting, although I still don't have any documentation from the state. But on September 25th, the Baker Polito administration announced $12.9 in grants for land conservation, urban parks, and climate resilience projects. And in that integrated effort were the planning assistant grant program where they funded 21 projects for a total of $1,072,175 in grant funding. And included in that for the town of Chelmsford was a $50,000 grant award for sustainable development strategies for growth at four highway interchanges along Route 3. So again, we, we'll await some formal notification of this in terms of grant documents and so forth. But um, you know, I, I, as I noted at the Finance Committee last evening, I'm sorry, last week, this was, in, you know, we didn't know the timing of this. We didn't know when it would be released. And, and by no means was this meant in any way to detract from or, or throw a wrench in the last minute, you know, to the, to the 120, uh, sorry, Route 40 zoning issue. This was, this is part of the whole issue of land use planning and sort of looking at it, you know, what can we be doing in all the areas of the town in terms of enhancement. So, um, so again, what, once we get some documentation, I'll forward it to you to the board. Uh, my sense is we'll form a citizens committee uh, across the community, sort of in vet issues, and then obviously if those issues either come back to the planning board or this board or others, um, you know, we'll go with them. But again, it's 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 meant as a tool for looking at what we can do better because I think we spent a lot of time, and you heard it again this evening, writing Route 40 and Route 129. However. I think you will see in the future there's probably some significant changes still on the horizon for Drum Hill um, and, and even on, on 110, um, you know, uh, in terms of this, um, the, the, you know, we, we're seeing that. I mean, we, 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 we expect the ribbon cutting soon for the Element Hotel up in Drum Hill. Uh, mm -hmm. and Very attractive. Yeah, they did a great yeah, job. Yeah, they've done a nice, and, and, nice um, job. You know, we're still wondering what the future is for Stop and Shop in Hannaford, too, as well. So. One side, very small side yep. on an element. There are two poles that are sticking out of the ground that yep. they're on the state side of their land yep. that were there but from before they redid the rotary. Yeah. Is there any way someone, either state or can pull those two? But they're just two poles sitting up in the middle of the grass, like right in the middle of that nice field they've got. Oh, and it, it's it from pre rotary right. or pre redone rotary. Are they marking like there's nothing on them. or something? There is nothing on them. They, they're like this. Whatever the sign was is gone, and they're in the middle of that grass. I noticed things like that. All right, well, we'll, we'll go check it out. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> um, the next item is the MSBA uh, South Rose School uh, roof project update. Um, good news is that project is moving along. We received notification from the Commonwealth 
um, and messy the school build, build, you know, building authority that they've assigned us with the OPM for the project, which is Yona's project manager. That's Jacobs um, out of uh, Boston, Mass. And then the designer will be Russo Bar Associates out of Woburn, Mass. Uh, we met with the representative from Jacobs uh, this morning, the superintendent uh, uh, of Public Works, uh, myself, the superintendent of schools, Dr. Lang, uh, and also the school uh, facilities manager. Um, had a very productive meeting. The goal, again, is to move this along, uh, get the doc contract documents in. Uh, have the project put out the bid after the first of the year and then have the work start right at the end of the school year um, so that's that's moving moving along and um, you know we'll we'll keep you updated as that moves along and then the last thing I have on the report and it's not on the agenda but it's timely but just wanted the board to be aware I sent it to you by email and it's something that happened as late as last Thursday evening is the state adopted um, the student opportunity the state Senate adopted legislation called the Student Opportunities Act um, the debate opened last Thursday. It was completed and voted unanimously last Thursday evening. Uh, the legislation now goes to the House. Uh, it's on, we don't have a date yet for when the House will um, take that up for consideration. Um, we anticipate it could happen perhaps later this month. Uh, then it would go to conference committee. And then the hope is that whatever is adopted would be in place for the governor's release of his budget uh, in January. Um, Last Thursday, I did have a conversation about half an hour with Senator Barrett um, while the legislation was in the Senate, and I just expressed the frustration from my perspective, uh, having been in the community now for over a dozen years, that th there was really no transparency in terms of what this would mean um, to the town of Chelmsford. Um, the governor's office released numbers the night before. Those were roundly criticized by the legislative leadership. However, those are the only numbers that have been offered to date. What, what appears to be the case, having seen what's transpired, is that the town of Chelmsford would continue to receive $30 per student in Chapter 70 education funds under this new legislation. Um, and we, however, we would receive some additional funding in terms of charter school reimbursements of, uh, and also special education transportation. But I expressed to Senator Barrett, um, I said, Senator, I said, the concern is, is that $30 per student doesn't even match inflation. Uh, it's roughly 1.4%. Um, you know, to put it in perspective, it's $150,000. Uh, we received that this past year. Our appropriation for our schools was up by $2 million. So it gives you a sense of the, you know, and in fact, you know, $150,000 from the state wouldn't even, would, it, would, it would provide a, not even a half of a percent on the teacher's contract, never mind the real cost of living and other uh, contracts for operations. There Congress was an effort. for two courses. Yeah, there, w there was an effort during the, the debate to amend the legislation to provide a minimum of $100 per community because there's over 100 communities that will, like Chelmsford, would receive minimum Chapter 70 aid uh, of $30 per student. That am amendment was defeated. There was an effort at $60 per student. That amendment was defeated. Um, it, it, like I said, I think, as we know, this community, so I explained to the Senator Barrett, I said, you know, one of the concerns in Chelmsford is we receive $6 million less in Chapter 78 than our neighboring town of Westford, which has a similar student enrollment, but a higher family uh, median income. Um, and I said, I think, Somehow the expectation may have been in Chelmsford over time that this would be the, since the law hadn't been, funding formula hadn't been amended in over 25 years, that this might be the time where the rising tide may actually, you know, address some of the disparities, but more importantly, provide a minimum level that's of, sta of adequate state investment going forward. Again, that's not included in the Senate version. I will keep you updated as the House takes up the legislation, but... Um, uh, it, it's 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 it, I, I did explain to him that it, I think it's going to present some challenges to Chelmsford and other communities going forward. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, so that's that's what's happening on the um, education funding. Uh, it, we also have not seen any ap action at this point on the supplemental state budget. Um, so because yeah, why that matters is there was talk about additional chapter ninety monies. Uh, and, and again, the state hasn't acted upon that at this time. So, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my report for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I do have one appointment that would be for the Cultural Council. It's Tricia Meskill for an expired three year term uh, ending June 30th, 2021. 
I make a motion that we approve the town manager's appointment of Tricia Mescal to the Cultural Council as presented. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that brings us to item 10, uh, which is a town manager's evaluation form. And this is uh, something that we were talking about earlier in the year, and then I think it just sort of, uh, as we got busy, got uh, we didn't readdress it. And so I had asked Pat to take a look at what we had had and just sort of clean up the, the format and uh, maybe trim down the questions a little bit. She, I think she did a great job. So with that, this becomes or I'm asking this to become the evaluation form we'll use next year uh, for Paul's review. And then the second piece was, as we were doing, as I was doing this, it dawned on me, did we actually finally settle on and we're all aware of what the town manager's goals were and what the Board of Selectmen, manager, uh, Board of Selectmen goals were. And so I just had those uh, re-added to our packet tonight just so we could all make sure we agree and we're on track and we're... But remember, we've, we've done some more work with the goals. Remember, you had that three-column right, report. Right, which I'm not... That night when we were looking for input and I was asking for input, it was a lot of silence and not a lot of input. So I didn't know if we wanted to just put that aside for a later date or because it didn't seem to be going anywhere that night. I thought we were going to have a work session to try to flush out what you had, had <coughs> like columns that here's the objective, here's, here's how you measure it or how you know when you're done, right? All right, we can do that if, if people want it. I don't mind doing it at all. It just seemed like that night I was asking questions about what people thought. I mean, what was on there weren't really my, I didn't pick them. So when I was asking for input, everybody was sort of silent. So I didn't think. Yeah, but we did have some feedback on them. I remember at one of our meetings we did. And we talked about having a possible work session to work out things like right. our overarching vision statement. I thought that was one of the things we were going to do during the summer when we had reduced regular meetings All right. so we'll add I mean these are st still the topics that we're gonna put on that spreadsheet and then we'll work through I mean I, I, go ahead Paul no my thought is we're halfway through the evaluation year so my thought would be at your next meeting in November to come in and give you a status report of where, where I think I'm at in terms of these 10 goals that have been assigned to me and then from there that may then flow in terms of feedback from the board of what additional items you want to see over the next six months so that might be a way of priming that pump. Yeah, because okay. I mean we're halfway through the year. It's yeah. not we can't really then take the goals we laid out and start sharpening them with a pencil and saying, right. to Paul, they've changed because yeah. we're six months into it, um, and these really weren't run with, uh, or at least that format wasn't run with. Good. The only um, question I had about the evaluation form is when we use the previous version of this. There's nowhere on here that you actually rate against the actual goals. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't know if we were, had been considering, you know, just having a, at the end of it, here's the list of goals and how do we do on this one to five scale? Or do we, I mean, oh, I think I, in the past you actually rated against the goals. There was a section in the end that I was looking to see if I brought it. In the past, there was a section in the end that we rated the goals. Well, this, the section in the end from earlier this year was a place to state the goals for the coming year. It wasn't a place to rate the current year's goals. Oh, I see what you're saying. It was a way to come up with the goals on the old one? Is that yeah, what it was where you state what the next year's goals are going to be, but we never actually rated against the goals themselves. We rated against the. That was the I first. The, that was the first section of the old right. form. I think in the years past, what we basically did is we took the list and we went, did he do them or not? Yep. And then we right. we had a conversation, and then we went and did the evaluation form. Okay. So that's I think in the past how we did it. We basically took the goals, did he accomplish it? Yes, no, and then we crossed off the ones he did, out of the ones that were new and then we took the evaluation form and we all walked away and did our own evaluation form and gave them to uh, Jeannie to con consolidate. That's how we did it in the past. But if you want to make, I'm, I'm fine with whatever you want to do. If you want to put a, a place to do that, I'm just that's asking, why I attached this. Is this all you, me do you, you only measure against these well, I wanted to seven have categories, six categories or do you also measure 
the goals accomplishment. Well, that's why I attached this because I wanted to make sure that the, the, the list of the, the town manager's goals so that when we were doing this, we had a discussion of whether these were accomplished or not. Uh, okay. I, I agree with what you're saying. I just I just need help with the format. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's like if, if, if the board wants to do it, it's before you get to category seven, it's a, another piece that just says the list of this year's goals and you rate whether we did it or not. Or maybe just an overall one that so you don't have to change it every year that just said did the how did we do did with the, the goals? Town manager achieve his goals yeah you know rank one to five and if he achieved mm -hmm. seven or eight maybe you should give him a five if you only achieved three maybe you give him a one right and there might have but been an extenuating circumstance they were or something if they individualized i know which ones you were referring to if it's an aggregate pad i'm not going to know you know it could be different she may have different feelings than than, than you may have or he may have on, could, on all those different have a little goals. Section there so I think you just put a grid next to each of those goals like you have there with the rating. Yeah. I think that's what I think that's what Virginia was suggesting. Yeah, that's right? all I was saying. I was rate each the each, the last each, page is a table that gets tailored for each that. year. Rate each goal. Right. Uh, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I'd rather do it in the in the individual than the aggregate because the aggregate is confusing. So yeah, it, you because could, you list goal one. Okay, what's the rating? One to five or whatever it is. Right. I'm concerned about traffic. Emily may be concerned right. about. Uh, right, so if you, with if you give public. a composite of 7.3, I'm not going to know what it is inside of there that's what's feeling. So I think if you did in individually, which I think is what Virginia was suggesting, just put a box next to each of those goals and rating one through five, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but do we agree these are the ten? So Remember, we good. took out we took out two. Um, this this seems we keep getting the same list back, and it always keeps. So not, two's out. Anything there. else? This um, is going to be the final one. Well, yeah. Okay. And I think one was with the Board of Selectmen, right? Yes. <laughs> one became ours. Yeah. No, well, no, it yeah, was, it was joint. Work a joint. It was a joint one. Other than that, we're good. The only other thing that threw me was the one to five scale because I'm used to one being unsatisfactory, and not five. <laughs> you want to switch? It's, well, it's flipped from what it was before. <laughs> oh, oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I really don't care. Yeah. All right, so we'll do that and have the final final draft at our next meeting in November. Yes. Say that again. We'll we'll make those changes and have the final draft of this for our next meeting in November. And that's where, when do you want to do the update on your, the six next months? Meeting. Next, next meeting, the yeah. November one. Yeah, because the <laughs> following meeting, you're going to be busy. You're going to have so tax, work. tax classification, the second meeting in November, and the audit presentation. So that's going to be a busy night. So anybody listening, just that was a notice. Tax classification, second meeting in November. Yeah, and <laughs> and, and uh, the financial audit as well. Yeah. I thought it was always a f first meeting in December, the tax classification. That's where you vote. Oh, okay. You'll vote the first meeting in December. But the presentation, then you have your two-week policy. Yep. Okay. All right. Section 11 is appointment. Discuss appointment of town legal counsel. Um, I noticed that the expenses are right in the front of this. That's just for legal, just for labor. That's for labor. You would ask for a breakdown. Um, right. Labor Council was able to provide it because when he uh, prepared the bills, he assigned each one of those matters a separate code. Yeah. Town Council so, did, didn't do that, and to, to create that would require basically a manual effort of going back and segregating them all. But this chart you give us, are there dollar signs on any of this? Like, what's hours, what's dollar signs, what's... Time bill is... I think it's all dollars. It's, it's all dollars. dollars. It's all dollar signs. Yeah, because otherwise, I don't think he did 4,000 hours. No, it's all, it's all dollars. Time. It's all dollars since, <laughs> so, since, since inception. That's, but what I'm wondering is... For a two-year period. For a two-year period. So what I'm wondering, though, is we spent 45000 on fire arbitration mm -hmm. and only twenty eight on superior unions? That's correct. Fire was that much more difficult than the Spears? Yes. You're, you're, you may re, I don't know if you recall we were in the, we were in Boston for a prolonged testimony uh, over a multi-day period. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was grueling.
Okay. Well, I, I think we're going to, I did, are we, Paul's not here. I was going to ask Paul about his, but anyways, uh, so let's go to the. I think he's in the hallway if you. Oh, like is he? Him. Why don't we do the next thing, which is the appointment. Okay. Because what were you going to do? You're going to ask Paul about. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I didn't, I think he, I just. He's right here. Oh. Paul, were you working on the, the bills, or were there an option on the bills for? There's really no way for me to go back and segregate them. <clears throat> Each entry you know, could have multiple different tasks that were done in a particular day, and the reason that they were done that way is really to keep the costs down. Um, if you segregate each entry and assign a certain amount of time to it, ultimately at some point you wind up aggregating more time than necessarily would have been attributable to that particular task. Um, I can do it um, moving forward. Um, okay. you know, it's, it's not something that's outside of the capacity of our billing software to do. Um, it had never been requested previously, and I just felt that it was simpler um, and more efficient to do it the other way. Okay. All right. Thank you. So where would you like to start the discussion? Well, I think we we uh, received um, proposals from, from three firms, all of which we know are, are qualified. Um, I think um, you know Paul Haverty and his his firm. They've they've got, done a good job for us over the past two years, and he does an excellent job, as we know, on on land use. Um, quite frankly, I, I I feel like we've we've lost some of what the uh, information that we we've we got when we had KP Law before. Um, I think being a large firm, they're able to do things on a larger scale and. It reduces sometimes the cost of some of the things that we get from them, like, you know, they, they send out um, uh, updates, you know, a periodic uh, um, update about things that might be, that the, the state might be working on that we should be aware of. Um, I know we use them several times to do seminars for how to conduct public hearings, um, things having to do with open meeting law and um, ethics and things like that. Um, and I, I also think, um, you know, having, a, having spoken with some people that, that used KP Law before, um, I, th I think it's not unlike the situation that um, Darlene Lucia mentioned uh, a few uh, meetings ago when she talked about the outside um, auditors that we use. Um, we've been using Powers and Sullivan for almost forever, and then there was one uh, contract period where we went to a different one. And the results were the same, <laughs> but the comfort level that the staff felt was different. Um, it, it took a little bit longer to get to the final result, like I said, even though the, the, the result was the same. And I think um, it's similar with some of the people that have used different uh, lawyers from the KP law firm, um, where they felt like um, they, they were better acquainted with the situation in town and better able to um, answer their questions and act in a more expeditious manner. So um, that's my thoughts on it. Did we, did we ask Paul what, for, for like a history of their, what they billed us over? Remember, you, uh, did, did we get that? Uh, you know, we caught them on the page when they were we had that in the last, in the last yeah. packet. We had that in the last packet. Yeah. The, the whole thing was in there. Yeah. Was it 190, I think? Yeah. For a two-year period. Mm -hmm. No, that was per year. Per year. Must oh, it was 190 right. per year. It's about, sorry, right, the it's, it's about between, what, 190 and 220. Well, what's our so budget we, for the selectmen every year, roughly? About, about, about 190,000, 195,000. Depends what comes up during a year, I guess. Are there certain rules, like if we go above 190, you have to? No. No. It, it's very. I mean, it, it goes up and down depending upon the year. And there's but not if, a set limit. It's, that yeah, it's, it's, not an, it's not a line item budget. It's part of the administrative budget of the town. I didn't know if there was like, once you go over 250, you got to go to town meeting. No. Or, okay. No.
somebody else. You know, I think the, um, you know, I appreciate the, all the information that we have from, from all three of them. And, and the costs, it looks like they would be comparable across all three. Um, I mean, my recommendation, if you wanted in the form of a motion, would be to hire KP law for most municipal services, including labor, and retain um, Paul Haverty as um, land use counsel. Well, I, so, I, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, I did go and try to talk with some of the different department heads, and you know, and um, I know I got like when I went down to uh, Board of Health, um, they were just they raved about the services they were getting and they were you know 100 percent pleased um and i also got positive feedback um or not necessarily positive just neutral same same as what we were getting before from some of the others so uh, um that's just my input on it i don't have any experience with kp or the larger firms um I do have one concern specifically about KP Law because my, rec my recollection is that they either couldn't get involved or had to recuse themselves when we got involved with the asphalt plant in Westford because they were representing Westford. And according to their documents, they're representing three of the five towns that border Chelmsford, including Tingsboro, where we may get into traffic issues. Um, from my perspective, it's about accessibility, and I think um, BBH has been highly accessible anytime I've needed anything. And it looks to me from the background that they come from um, some degree of bench strength in municipal law in the previous firm and with what they've carried here. And I just question whether whatever bumps there have been, if those are totally irreconcilable or if it's about a conversation and it, I mean I, I just I don't take changing legal counsel I don't think that should be taken lightly and there was a reason which I don't have the background on that we switched so I'm just I'm looking for that compelling reason why to switch back and I'm not sure I'm seeing it Was that the case that KP Law had to recuse themselves because there was uh, an issue with the asphalt plant? Yes, in my over a dozen years' experience with the town, that was the only circumstance where there was a conflict between Chelmsford and another town um, with, with KP. With it was then Coleman and Page uh, over that period. I don't recall any other. And I don't, Mike, you served even before me. With with uh, we don't recall any other issue where we've been in conflict with another community. The asphalt plant was a unique situation. Um, in many ways, I don't think our views were misaligned with, with Westwood on that issue, but they could not represent both parties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you anticipate similar issues with the uh, surrounding towns that is represented that are represented by KP, or like how often how often does this sort of thing happen? Well, he just said it was once in 12, once it's in 12 once in years. The 12 year, it's once and in 12 years I was here, and then Mike served on the board before I arrived. Do you know if that's standard they, they were council for, for other towns? Is this, I mean, is this like a, a, a sort of a lightning strike situation? or? Yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of any pending issues that are, we're going to be on conflict in terms of Boebrecker or Westford you know, at, at this point. Or, or, right, that was a, a real, uh, an unusual situation, the way that all went about. Hmm. I mean, aside from like a glaring issue, you know, the one thing that I think is can be deemed somewhat unfair is that you know you you've had um, BB and H for two years, and then you turn around and go back to who you were with. I don't want to send the wrong message to the community that hey, made it his two year contract, and now we're we're jumping ship. Um, I think they took a chance with us. We took a chance with them. We did leave KP for a reason. Um, and I don't see any glaring issues with BB&H that 
we're saying because of this they got to go so to me it's right and i'm not saying that there is yeah. either i i gave you my reasons yeah if there's some bumps in the road as, as we refer to then um, i think those can be addressed either you know with you know, internal meetings or something like that to figure out what those are but uh, I guess I, I would just say to that, I mean, given the, the size of, of BBH versus the size of, of KP Law, I think um, you're, you're talking about um, opportunities that they have to help us with, you know, being proactive that, uh, that would not be available to a, a smaller firm. That would be one of my concerns. That was only, that was my only question, too. Like, where you have a, a firm that has... Um, such a degree of specialty uh, in land use versus a, a firm that is huge. KP is huge from what I understand. And I wonder if having access to experts on so many different levels, whether things maybe get done faster or more thoroughly or there is less less research time just because they, they, they say oh wait no hold on we have we've done this here here and here as opposed to uh, I can look this up and I can research this and I can handle it but I'm gonna need a little more time to look it up and, and that that's that's my only question is if, if you have a, a, a larger pool of resources to draw from from is it more efficient but is it more efficient I under KP w with Paul and BB and H we have extreme accessibility yes if it's KP you're not gonna have that that's not what they say here well in the past when we did it it was have there, have there ever the been have there ever been issues where like was there an accessibility issue they, they never nobody's ever refused to come out and meet with the board if that's the issue I mean I can't imagine because that's, 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 that's on the phone that, but but isn't that what they're contracted to do but if I recall right, that wasn't what we were doing before. I have no idea. What, what do you mean? Well, before, when we had a question, we gave it to you, and you brought it to them, yeah. and then you came back to us. We didn't call them direct. And you often had a written response if there were issues that came to the board. Right, but uh, went through you. Right. I don't know what you're doing these days uh, in terms of your conversations outside of the administration of the town, so I can't address that. Um, but, I mean, I... I yeah, I well, let's <coughs> take the, the flag issue, for example. If, if mm -hmm. that was under KP, that would have gone to you, and you would have gone to KP and then mm -hmm. come back. Yeah. There would have been no is direct. That, but that, that doesn't prevent, that, doesn't pre that wouldn't have prevented you from picking up the phone and talking to council, whether it's current council or any council by the phone. Yeah, that's my understanding of I don't, I don't understand what the... Is that sometimes I just don't remember having that type of ability before. I think because sometimes I, well, it, I, it is I, better to find. I, I don't want to think. I wasn't regulating the board's use of counsel with a current law firm or previous law firm. The board wished, and, the, and I believe chairs did discuss, have conversations with, with town council directly sure. uh, over, over the dozen years that I've been here. So I don't want to feel that there's a different model in place. Again, I was, again, I was new. Uh, yeah. you know, when we took this vote, I was six months, seven months mm -hmm. on the board. So. so, yeah, my understanding is that for some things, it would be better to just funnel it and have one point of contact because it, it again, it's more efficient. But it, Well, that was going to be one of my recommendations if we re- point BBH that it does flow through a point of contact. I, I think Pat had a, had a good idea. I mean, and I think Paul last time wanted, uh, you said you you labor council with Copeman and Page was one of the best that you ever worked with or something, right? I don't believe I said that in open session. I but, think you did. But no, I said it in closed session, George. But I'll no, you I said it right there. I mean, I, it doesn't matter. I mean, oh, I'll say it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no, I had no issues with the labor council that well, was that provided. Was probably, I don't think probably you might have only. Been, this is probably the only one you've had since you've been here at, at that point. I, I, I've, what do you mean? I mean, I've. How long, I've, how long was Goldman Page here? Twelve years, but I've also been in this this business for thirty years, well, including, uh, maybe, including maybe eighteen years not with here. the town of Chelsea. Maybe, maybe you said it since you've been here. But no, I recall I, I, that because, and I and I know what my remark was. So, I mean, I I, I would like to keep Paul on as the uh, town council and land use council, and if you you know, I, I don't think uh, you've uh, the other the, the labor council has served us well. Uh, 
so that to make a change there wouldn't be no problem for me. I, I just want to make it clear. I'm not complaining about the current Labor Council. I will uh, make not, the point. I will make the point that I saying. was well. Oh, we I, were well served by KP Law, Brian Mazur, who was the attorney. Um, I think what I'll say, I'll go on the record. I'm not afraid of offering opinions. You know, if, if you gave me the choice, I would. You know, I would. You know, go with Brian Mazur. Brian, you know, he had excellent relationship with that. But whatever reason, the board two years ago went away from that. Um, and so, as you know, we're in the thick of things right now. So it's, you know, I, I think it can be picked back up by, by Brian and KP Law if that's what the board chooses to do. And perhaps there may be benefits of that given the entanglements that we're involved with right now in terms of it, that hearing that's coming up in February. So I don't have an issue with that. I also want to make it clear, you know, that I have no issues with with Paul Haverty in, in, no. in terms of his his service and obviously Paul's expertise, as he noted in his document to the board, is land use issues. Yeah. But it's but it's it's clear, and you've heard directly from the department head, there have been some issues that are non land use areas, such as elections, such as you know appellate tax board, such as the collector's office, where there's been some frustration from department heads, you know, in terms of either inefficiencies or. or you know, whatever those issues are with, with non-land use issues. Um, and I think Paul addressed that in his memo to the board. So again, I'm not telling tales out of school and I'm speaking in public about that, you know. Um, and, and, you know, again, you've heard that directly from department heads, you know. And I think um, here, so what I saw in the, this paragraph here on page two, provision of legal services. It says, as you are aware, our approach to the day-to-day -day management of a client's legal needs is through a small legal team led by a primary contact with in-person or telephone availability and coverage for the town whenever and as needed. And so my, my understanding of lawyers is that you have access to them because that's what you're paying for them for. Um, and uh, certainly there are some matters where it would just be easier to be like, hey, Paul, like I'll send an email and be like, hey, Paul, what, what would this be? And then he can pass it along, especially if there are five of us with similar questions. It's dumb to have that question repeated, but, but where you have, you know, where you might have um, differing points of view, maybe it, I, I think that there are certainly times when it is appropriate uh, to have a, a one-off question from a board member. I think so. whatever we do, though, we should have the reach out to legal go through with the chair. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah I don't in the, think in that the anybody should just forget. And the, the previous phone. board's one was to go through the manager. I mean, if you call Pat, right, that was yeah. the way it was right. done because or the, or it was an issue of, of, of controlling your legal costs. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably what you were mentioning earlier, Ken, but I, I don't think it prohibited a member, but it was like, look, we want to make hmm. sure that we don't have three or four people calling for the same issue. Right, and tripling the bill, yeah. Right. All right, so where are we? Well, I'll make that a, a motion then, that uh, we uh, appoint uh, KP Law as our uh, general municipal council and labor council um, and retain uh, BBH as land use council uh, through, let's say, June 30th, 2021. That's not what George said, though. Uh, I thought no, it was. That's yeah, not what I thought you said either. Oh, that's what I heard Pat say. But that's not what George said. George said general counsel and land yeah, use and KP for, for legal. I mean for labor. 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 Well, you got a motion. You need a second. So that's your motion. That's my motion, yeah. Well, well my motion is what I said. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will second Pat's motion. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. What's the opposing bills? motion? I did. I said it. I was against. All right. Do we have a new motion? That's what I mean, like a new motion. You're going to make the motion, Pat? Or we're going to make a motion to keep... Uh, uh, Mr. Haverty's firm on is uh, general counsel and land use counsel and Copeland and Pages labor counsel. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Three. Did you vote? I didn't vote. No. I'll vote yes. All right, All right so fine. whatever. That's fine. Yeah. I don't have any real strong feelings. I just. So that's a. I like. 
So that's through larger resources. Voting yes or no? Um, all right, I'll vote yes, that's fine. So 5 1, uh, 5 0. And that's through is it another two years. Through June 30th, 2021? Yes. <coughs> that's effective immediately. That screw things up? No, no. I just want to make I just sure. See I you do no, no. I just want to make sure I'm just understanding yeah. it right because the only thing that has changed is your is your labor council. It's labor. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So that brings us to uh, meeting minutes. Meeting minutes. Okay, these were done in, in four segments because of the four different topics that we covered that evening. Um, and then the one topic where, uh, Ken, you had to leave the room. So I'll make a motion that we approve but not release the first, second, and third uh, segments. Second. We have a motion to second all in favor. Aye. 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 And then I'll. It's a roll call, right? That, no. No. No, okay. we don't not to approve. Okay. Right? And then I'll make a motion that we um, approve but not release the fourth segment. Second. Yeah, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. And one abst abstention. Um, before we move on to the next topic, Paul, uh, going back to legal, you had made the comment about bumps in the road. Would it be helpful if we set up a subcommittee of, say, you, two board members, and the heads to talk about any bumps no, in the road? I don't think it's personality issues. It, no. it, it was just a feeling of, of expertise, expertise right. and responsiveness on issues. I just want to so make sure that everybody's good with it. And no, no. I, I don't think there's any issues. Okay. There might be some disappointment by department heads, but I don't think there's any issues. And, and, and Paul, I think Paul's been aware of those issues. I, you know, and I think you know, um, we can resolve it. The next one is to adjourn, but do you want to take item 15 out of yeah. order? To well, let's take, and then, yeah. And then we'll do go into executive session, not return. Do you have no liaison reports? Well, we'll, no, we'll do that, but I'm okay. just uh, okay. I'm wondering if you want okay. to just get 15 out of the way. You're right, we can do liaisons first if you want, but. Let's do it your way. So let's do vitamin, the vote for collective bargaining agreement for, with the library employees. I'll make a motion that we approve the memorandum of agreement between the town of Chelmsford and the um, Chelmsford Federation of Teachers, Local 3569, which is for library personnel. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. All right, liaison reports. Who wants to start? George? Nothing. Oh, almost it. Thanks. Virginia? Um, just a couple things. Uh, the Capital Planning Committee is going to be meeting beginning on Thursday evenings in November. Uh, the first meeting is tentatively planned for uh, Thursday the 15th at 7 o'clock, and they're moving from the past when they used to meet on Friday mornings to meeting on Thursday evenings to help accommodate people who work during the day and have commutes. So what's the, meeting, what's the date of that first one? Uh, November 15th, if that's a Thursday. Okay. Um, it would be the 14th, I think. Yeah, I think, I, I think it's the 14th. I think yeah. I have the... Because the 11th is the first. The date's mixed up. 11th is Monday. And then um, the Chelmsford Public Schools, uh, if you watch the beginning of their October 1st meeting, the school committee presented a video that was produced for Project 351. And Project 351 is a nonprofit that prom promotes youth-led service. Um, and the school system in the town is very proud that Isabel Cole, who's a CHS graduate, was featured in the video as one of the Project 351 ambassadors. Uh, so we're very grateful for Isabel and the project for their dedication to the community and growing our youth. Also from the school committee, as part of its strategic plan update, they will be holding its first public forum on October 22nd. So the public's participation and input in that session is a valuable part of the process for their strategic plan update, and anyone is welcome to participate. I believe it's at the Elks Club. That's it? Yeah. Emily? Um, many of mine were in warrant articles, um, but there's a stormwater uh, management um, action committee meeting on, sorry, on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and uh, it's 
it's one of those points of interest. There's not a whole lot to do, but it's it's. I find it really interesting to see where our stormwater goes and our um, what our engineers are doing to uh, make better use of this resource that that stormwater actually is. So, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, the only thing I have is uh, the library. Um, as of October 20th, they'll be open on Sundays until next May. And on October 20th, um, they're going to have a party from 2 to 4 p.m. It's to, they're encouraging people to wear costumes, but it's not required. There'll be music, crafts, and refreshments. And you can have your picture taken with the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> and this is to begin their 2020 membership drive. So everybody come out and enjoy that and sign up for the Chelmsford Friends of the Library for their membership drive. So Great. Um, and with that, uh, I don't have anything, so we'll adjourn. You want to do press? Oh, any press questions? Any left? <laughs> any press questions? Good. Uh, motion? Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn to executive session not to return to regular session for uh, discussion, to, to discuss strategy with, re with respect to potential litigation regarding ledge road commercial trucking. Second. A motion second all in favor? Aye. That you Aye. have to do oh, a roll, roll call. A. A. Aye. 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 All right. Someday I'll remember that's a roll call vote. See on the thing it said to return. That's